Uh, we were calling it Stanley's in Love, our big uh, Tinder dater, Chris Stanley. Just uh, crushing it out there. Hey, it's a Friday. This is the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I am Ron Bennington. We're about to give out a bunch of prizes for a street joke. If you had a joke, the kind of joke that you could tell to a friend or someone you just met, we'll send you into the pretty good prize closet. And we've got some pretty good prizes. So it's 844-ROCK-GOD, 8 for for rock god street joke the old school jokes that seem to be fading away because of the internet and everything happening in five minutes the joke used to take a while to move around the country and let everybody enjoy it street jokes 844 rock god give us a call we'll be starting that in a couple minutes but we want to announce the next unmasked where's that big unmasked sounder do not have it all right, the next Unmasked will be 8 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, February 8th at The Stand. And this is one I've been waiting a long time to do, Unmasked with Mr. Nick DiPaolo. I don't want to say that Nick is our favorite because that's mean to others, but Nick makes us laugh the hardest. I love, I love Nick DiPaolo. This is going to be so much fun. It's going to be at the stand, which is always, always a great place to have it on mass. We had so many great ones there. Cannot wait. Yeah, you're right. I don't think we've ever had kind of a bad on mass at the stand. No. And so far, uh, Vito will not get in touch with Joe. <laughs> There's some kind of bromance that Vito has stopped. What wow. happened? I don't know. I thought that they were besties. I don't know what that means, besties. Best friends forever. And it's just like, if you want to say that, but really fast. Besties. Besties. Okay. It reminds me too much of the Westies. And I get a little nervous. <laughs> so that's Nick DiPaolo unmasked February 8th. That's Wednesday, February 8th. At the Stan Comedy Club, so it's great because it's a nighttime event, which is always uh, makes it easier to get in for. And unlike the unmasked we do here, you can have cocktails. Yes. And the food at the stand. Oh my God, the food at the stand. It's really good. I hear that from everybody. <laughs> Almost cult like. Uh, but that's going to be a fun one, huh? It's going to be so much fun. Nick is always fun. Now that sets up the fact that CISO is going to be running his uh, new special, Inflammatory, Thursday, February 16th. So this is the uh, winner of Nick DiPaolo. Just everything happening for him. I feel like I, this is his year. Yeah. Everything's coming together for him. Uh, that was why Bell um, tweeted yesterday. That he had a great time as usual. Loved doing this show. That's so sweet. We got to become better friends with what, him. Like great stories he has. I know. Well, he's got the most amazing stories of anybody. I call them the comedy Forrest Gump because he's been <laughs> with everybody. I mean, he just turns up in great situation. Like his Gilda stories alone are incredible. His Gilda stories tear me up. Yeah. I hope that play gets done with him too. I'm Can Chucky's you imagine in love with her. Just being best friends with Gilda. That's that was my dream when I was a kid. My dream. She was like she's like original manic pixie dream girl. Yeah, she kinda was. Who else dated her? Marty Short dated her. And then she was married to uh wasn't she married Gene to Gene Wilder? The, yeah, but wasn't there someone else, I thought? The guy that used to be the guitar player. Yeah, uh, G.E. Smith. Yeah, G.E. Smith, who also played guitar for Bob Dylan. And I believe a little duo out of Philadelphia. Really? Hall Notes, yeah. Hall and Oates. Yeah, he was part of that. Hall and Oates uh, always has the best players. I always thought that Hall and Oates and probably Steely Dan were the two bands that were like, like music knew how to find yeah. the best the best really professional people. Not your kind of punk rock. Yeah. Like, oh, we're all sloppy and having fun. But like yeah. really great musicians. <laughs> <laughs>
like I get it. I understand. There's plenty of bands I like that are sloppy and having fun. Yeah. But I want sometimes just to hear fantastic musicians. And then other times hear music that you're like, I think I could figure out how to play that. Hey, all right. You know how we've been talking about uh, Dater Boy mm -hmm. and how uncomfortable. Last night, he sends to my phone, check out this Selena Gomez in a thong. I'm like, dude, you don't send me shit like this. <laughs> no. I thought she was 10. No, no, no. She's yeah. of age. But barely? She's like 20. She's, she's That's barely. That's barely to us adults don't, over yeah, here. Don't send that to me on a phone. And why is she in a thong? <laughs> oh, she just wanted to show it off on her Instagram. All right, this is up on the iBank today. All right, let's, she's a really let's take a look. See, uh, a really attractive young, like, foul face, like a really yeah, like a cute third grader. She's actually twenty four. I was wrong. So she's very okay. same age as James Dean when he died. Okay, fair. She could be. The James Dean of her, but she was uh, dating like Bieber, somebody, right? Yeah, she was like Bieber's first like uh, big girlfriend. Big girlfriend. She's not big. Like God, a famous girlfriend. Is it big or famous? Which the hell one is it? <laughs> big time, big time girlfriend. <laughs> See, now I feel bad because she's just she has the face that I thought she was like seventeen years old. She has the face that she's like nine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, she has a all right. Now, obviously, a very pretty young lady. But who's the creep taking this creep picture? Yeah, that is a, that's kind of and a where creep is, shot. is he only in the mirror? <laughs> yeah, what's happening? I like that guy. Her, uh, her, um, the caption is Beauty and the Beast. Hold on, I don't even see a thong. Is there a thong? Yeah, it's, it's like a uh, flesh, flesh, yeah. Okay. A flesh if you happen to be white, you fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> what is she famous for, by the way, Selena? I believe at uh, Disney. Disney. She was a Disney star, and then she became like a singer. You mean like a TV star? Yeah, Disney TV star. Like one of those things where she's her own twin? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> she was on a show called Wizards of Waverly Place. That's disgusting that you know that. <laughs> you know that? Well, they're the same age. You know what, Vito? That could be you taking the picture. That looks like you in there. It kind of does. Photoshop you? yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love to be Selena Gomez thong. And what's her tat say? I can barely see it. It looks like it's writing. Yeah. yeah. Like, please like help a, me. This big man has got me. <laughs> Some sort of a rib cage script. That's pretty sexy. It's a sexy tap. It's very uh, popular with the ladies. Uh, it is? You yeah. know, I was saying that she looks young, but I, I will say she does look like a grown ass woman there. Oh, ass wise. Yeah. <laughs> you always saw her ass. She just has a baby face. Yeah. That's all. Okay. All right, you were fine to tweet that to me or whatever you did, text You're it to me. I don't know what they're all called. <laughs> I you, texted. You insta set, uh, set it to me. How'd your date go real quick? Uh, it, start stuff. It, uh, it went very well. Uh, stayed the night at her place, and then I, then I went back to a store here in the morning. Well, I guess I didn't stay the night then. I just kind of... Who's ringing? Not me. That's Is that Let me see through it. the headphones or outside? Can't hear it through the headphones, but if you take your headphones off, you can hear it. It's out there, and it's so loud it's even coming through the door. Yeah, it seems like uh, part of that posse is probably blowing up somehow. Oh, hell yeah. Wait, the date went very well. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's the second time you're with her, second time you stayed over. Mm-hmm, yeah. So she's your girlfriend, though. Oh, no, 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 no. I, she's going to get back together with her boyfriend, and I feel like this is a, a bad thing that I'm doing. <laughs> Why? Wait, I'm now I'm forgetting. This is the... Blonde girl. This blonde. is the blonde girl that I met last Saturday who... um. Who uh, just talked about her boyfriend, ex boyfriend, the entire right, time? Right, right. Oh, he's my. I mean, he's uh, kind of a tough guy. He's a tough guy, yeah. Yeah. So my my worry <laughs> is she's gonna get back together with this dude and like find my phone number in her phone. Oh he no. He seems like the jealous type from You'll what she's told him me. In a fight. I hope so. He is older than I am. Chris, I need you to train up. <laughs> you need to learn how to swim what? and fight in the next couple weeks for different reasons. Fucking you should nervous. have a sea hunt <laughs> underwater. <laughs> I gotta get an ankle knife. You know, find out what that sound is. It's driving us batty. Um, let's see. I don't even get some of these. All right. Uh, ready to get this thing started, Chris? Yes. yes, I am. I know you got some production. I'm excited about it. Let's start it off. This guy comes in the bar, walks up to the bartender. This is bartender. I got me a bet for you. It's time for Street Jokes. There's an old couple in bed, Mary and Paddy, and they wake up on the morning of their 
50th anniversary. Call in now at 844-ROCK-GOD with your best street joke for a chance to win. Uh, it reminds me of my favorite poem, which is, uh, Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a schizophrenic, and so am I. <laughs> it's Street Jokes! Yeah. All the time with street jokes. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Tell a street jokes, yeah. <laughs> Oh, That's how I walk down the street, joke. telling jokes, <laughs> telling jokes, and I'm telling jokes. Chris, you got a joke? Yeah, I got a joke. Yeah. All right, a couple of bros get uh, shipwrecked. They're on this island. First of all, I already love it. Bros. <laughs> I like the bros. Okay. All right, so they're shipwrecked on this island, and then the natives find them. They're like, all right, listen, guys. You can live in our tribe. You, we'll feed you. We'll house you. you. We'll take care of you. But you just you can't sleep with any of our women. That's it. That's the only rule. They get to the tribe. The women are beautiful. They're, they aren't wearing any clothes. These guys are staying there for a little while. They're like, I can't take it anymore. I got to sleep with them. So they bang some of the women. The rest of the tribe comes like, we told you you shouldn't fuck the women. Now, you can either have death or walla walla. Guys, bro number one's like, well, I don't want to die. Give me walla walla. So... Every man in the tribe fucks him in the ass. He comes back to his buddy. He's like, look, dude, no matter what you do, don't take Walla Walla. Fucking take death. That was terrible. I want to die. Second bro goes, all right, give me death. The chief goes, death by Walla Walla. <laughs> oh, my God. Dark. <laughs> Homophobic dark. and dark. <laughs> and petered out at the end. <laughs> Just petered out. I think you could at least hit that punch. <laughs> Vito, you're on deck, but I'm going to take some of these people first. Welcome to Street Jokes. Look at this. Look at this stupidity. Uh, Donald in St. Louis, what's your street joke? Donald Trump dies. Goes to hell. Devil's checking him in. Devil says, yeah, yeah, I see you're supposed to be here, but we've been Expanding the presidential wing, and I just don't have a room ready for you yet. I'm gonna have to send somebody to heaven. Hold on, follow me. Come with me. He opens the first door, and Barack Obama is already in there. And Barack is being forced to give one prostate exam after another after another. And Trump says, uh, "Nah, that's not me. That's 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 not my hell." And the devil says, "Yeah, yeah, no, that was poetic. That was perfect, for Barack. I'll find you a better room." Goes down the hall, opens the other door. There's Al Gore. Al Gore is being forced to cut down one tree after another with his bare hands and an axe. His hands are bleeding. They're blistered. And Trump says, that, 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 that's not me. Really? Really? And, and uh, the devil says, yeah, no, no, that was perfect for Al. I, I'll find you something better. Walks down the hall a little further. There's Bill Clinton. He's tied to a bed. And Monica Lewinsky's doing what Monica Lewinsky does best. And I get it. Trump says, well, well, you know, I guess I could. I guess, I mean, if, if I had to, because I'd be the greatest at that if I could. And uh, the devil says, all right, well, then it's done. Monica, you're free to go. Yeah, we saw that one coming a mile <laughs> away, dude. Here's the other thing that bummed me out there. All, all those people are alive. I like to hear, <laughs> if I'm going to hear stuff about, they should have been dead. You know what I mean? They should have been dead. <laughs> You um, know what I did like though I I will give him credit for I liked the <laughs> like he put the hands into it. Oh, I was already <laughs> I was already bored and exhausted by then. Um, here is uh, Dave, Dave in Ohio, looking for our first winner in okay. street jokes. It's not as long as the last. Joke. Thank Christ. <laughs> okay, what kind of bird cannot get pregnant? I'm gonna say a Larry bird. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? A swallow. <laughs> yes. Okay. I like Not it. yet at a winner. <laughs> Not yet at a winner. Street jokes <laughs> going down. Winner is going to go into the pretty good prize closet. Here's Craig. 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 <laughs> Hi, Gail. Hi, Ron. Hey, hey, buddy. What a great crowd here. Yeah. Hey, is. listen. I only date meth girls and sluts. Okay. Why is that? You know why? Why? Because they never give me shit for being an alky. I look like a prince. <laughs> All right. That's uh, not a street joke. No. That's just a personal that's, background. That's thing that he Vito, said. jump in with a killer street joke. <laughs> 
So a guy calls up his wife and he says, when I get home, I'm going to be really, really hungry. So I have dinner ready right when I get home. Right. So he finally walks home. He gets in and his wife is just sitting on the railing on their staircase, just sliding down and pulling herself back up and sliding down and pulling herself back up. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm warming up your dinner. Oh, dirty. Wow. That is. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Damn, you, know? you work blue. You work oh really blue. Oh my goodness, blue. that's not for uh, the kids. <laughs> oh my god, this is a children's show. We got a children's show here. Uh, hey, Bob in Jersey. Bob, you got a street joke? What's going on, ladies? Uh, why are there no casinos in Africa? Uh oh. Uh oh. I don't know, Bob. Why are there no casinos in Africa? There's too many cheetahs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know what? That got me. <laughs> that got me. Pretty good prize, Claudia. Yeah. 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 Where's all the production? <laughs> no production. Thanks, no production. All right, street jokes. Vito, send him in the pretty good prize closet. Let us know what he picked up. It's street jokes. No stingers. No stingers. Street jokes. All right, Vito, what do you got? I got the hangover signed by Ed Helms. Wow. Nice. That's wow. Great. Now, you have the hangover DVD signed by he Ed Helms. Yes. All right. Okay. Easy. <laughs> Easy. It's street jokes. Street jokes. There we go. Um, here is, um, let's go over here to Ted. Ted, what do you got, buddy? Hey, buddies. So a yeah. uh, guy wakes up one morning, hears the voice of God. God says, quit your job, sell your house, go to Las Vegas. He's like, what? God says, quit your job, sell your house, go to Las Vegas. Guy says, all right, God. Quits his job, sells all his worldly possessions, gets on a plane, lands in Vegas, and goes, now what? God says, go to Fantasy Island. He walks over, he goes to this casino, he steps inside, he says, now what? God says, sit down at a blackjack table and... Put it all, put it all on this next hand. Guy says, "Sure." He says, "Okay." Card comes down. You know, he gets a he gets a king. He's like, "Wow, okay." Next card comes down, six. Like, hey, this is pretty good. God's like, "Nope, take a hit." He takes a four. Guy puts down a four. Guy's like, "God, I got I got twenty here. This is pretty good. I'm not going anywhere." And God says, "Have faith in me. I am your Lord. Take a hit." Dealer puts down a five, and God goes, fuck! All right, thanks, buddy. Uh, it's cute, but it took a little long to get yeah. there. Yeah. Put a little long to get there. I don't think we needed to trip to Vegas. <laughs> right. I could have just said, thought he's walking in the casino. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Could have cut it a little shorter. Uh, here's Kevin in New Hampshire. Kevin, what's your... Uh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, guy walks out of a liquor store holding a brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. Indian chief standing outside says, what'd you get? Guy says, uh, I got a bottle of wine for my wife. Indian chief says, good trade. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, big laugh out of Gail. Does that mean pretty good prize closet, Gail? Send him to the pretty good prize closet. Pretty good prize closet. Uh, yeah. Gavin, nice joke. <laughs> hey, what's, what's he get, Vito? Congratulations, you got the book Presto signed by Penn Jeez. Yay! Yay! It's oh. very good. Jesus Christ. Guys, we need production for this kind of stuff, right? Yes. You got some music. You got some stuff dropping down. And we're doing what? We're doing radio. We're doing radio. Radio. Gail, yeah, you got a joke. You got a I street do. joke. I was yeah. going to tell one that I've told you a long time ago, but I think I want to tell you first one that you haven't heard. Okay, great. All right. So this cop is pulled over the side of the road. He's waiting for speeders. And all of a sudden, this car comes whipping down the street. It's not only speeding, but it's swerving all over the place. The cop <clears throat> steps on the gas, puts his lights on, pulls the car over, walks up to the driver, and he sees it's this old Irish priest. And he says, uh, Father, do you know how fast you're going? And he's like, Tatangis, I'm, uh, I'm late for a wake. He says, it's 2 a.m. And not only were you speeding, you're driving erratically. Father, have you been drinking? And he says, no, 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 certainly not. And the cop says, uh, yeah, what's in the cup? He's like, this? It's uh, water. He says, Father, it doesn't look like water. That's wine. And priest says, Jesus Christ, he's done it again! <laughs> 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 oh, God, the Irish are drunk people. <laughs> They're just drunk people.
and we should laugh at them. <laughs> uh, here is Ty in Michigan. It's street jokes. Yeah, how can you tell if Vito has a high sperm count? How can you how? tell? When Chris has to chew before he swallows. Uh, <laughs> all the crunchiness of that that Chris would be chewing on. Uh, James. James, welcome to Street Jokes. Happy Friday the 13th, buddies. Hey. So, what do you call an Asian with a penis implant? An Asian with a penis implant. Tell us. A Caucasian. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Street Jokes. <laughs> 844 Rock God. 844 Rock God. We've already given away two big prizes. Two big today. ones. Two big prizes. Signed Pen Gillette book. And also signed The Hangover. The Hangover DVD, which was signed by Ed Helms. Who who doesn't like Ed Helms? Love him. Yeah, that was the thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody everybody likes mm-hmm. Ed Helms. Jason, Chi Town, what do you got? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. I got the What's the difference between a chickpea and a navy bean? A chickpea and a navy bean? I don't know. I've never had a navy bean on my chest. (laughs) (laughs) Is that shit joke going to get there? I mean, I'm voting against. I'm voting against the shit joke. I I will agree with you, though. Okay. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. Ryan in Minnesota. A uh, what's 17 inches and makes a grown woman cry. Why don't you tell us, Ryan? Stillborn. Oh, oh sad. Sad. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a large penis. Oh, we That's... were waiting for the dick joke. Yeah. Michael, Colorado. My- Michael. Michael, turn your radio down. Move south front should have told you. <laughs> All right, now you're behind because oh, no. you're so fucking confused and you could have won Street Jokes, 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. Uh, Wayne in Maine is mainly yep. on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> There's these two old birds up here in Maine, and the girl was sitting on the front lawn, and the guy says, oh, you, you're burning birch in your stove? And he said, how do you how do you know that? He said, oh, I can tell any time about what you're burning. He said, oh, hold on. He said, so he runs in, and he throws a stick of maple in. He comes out, and the guy says, oh, that's maple. He says, all right, I'll try it again. So he goes in and throws a stick of oak in. He says, now that's oak. So he says, I'll get him. So he grabs a pair of his old lady's dirty drawers and throws them in there. And he comes outside, and he says, what What kind of wood's that? He says, well, that's either a stave off a fish barrel or a board off a shit house. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> With the pain <laughs> accent? <laughs> no? pretty good. <laughs> Wait. I don't- Pretty good Go prize closet. Yeah. All right. Because we loved your main character more than your joke. <laughs> Vito? You get Wayne's World signed by Rob Lowe. Jesus Christ. Wayne gets Wayne. Wayne's World for Wayne. <laughs> and Maine's World for Maine. Sub, uh, signed by a guy barely in the mu- movie, Mr. Rob Lowe. Pretty but good a, prize. But an integral part. Pretty good prize. All this production could be good in here, right, Chrissy? Yes, yes, it could. You miss it? Yes. Uh, it is street jokes. Hopefully we can do this every once in a while now, because we love to hear the occasional street joke. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. Uh, here's Matt in Jersey. What does a robot do after sex? What does a robot do after sex? Nuts and bolts. Okay. Uh, if I was a child, I'd be going crazy right now. Uh, here is uh, Bob. Bob, what's up, buddy? Hey, Bob from Park Shots. Uh, guy comes home from work, dejected, middle of the day. Wife greets him at the door. What's, that? what's wrong, honey? Oh, I got fired. Why'd you get fired? Ah, I was sticking my dick in the pickle slice. What happened to the pickle slices? Oh, she was fired. Too. Oh, <laughs> pretty good prize. Pretty good prize. Pretty good prize. Good job. <laughs> hey, Bob, I'm going to give you. You're better than me. Signed by Bonnie McFarlane. Nice. Oh, that's a book, Vito. You can explain it as the book "Better Than Me," signed by Bonnie McFarlane. Great prize, and Bob. That'll keep you going through this uh, long, cold winter that we're having. Probably 69 degrees today. <laughs> Sweating. 
They say it's going to get progressively warmer throughout the day, though. So tonight it'll be in the 30s. And tomorrow, snow. Good. I want to get nice and sick. I want to have 70 degrees and then below freezing. As I don't know as a human being that doesn't have a cold right now. Yeah. I don't know Everyone a is single sick. human being. And here's the weird thing. It's all like a different style of cold. Like no one has the same cold. Yeah. Like I'm not stuffy. I have like body like fatigue yeah. and like my body is sore. A lot of people are just passing out. I read it some people last night. They said I've been sleeping for four days. Oh my God. Four fucking days. <laughs> So you got like a little music, something to sweeten this up for us, Chris. Yeah, play them, play music on these. Yeah. You getting it though? Making sense? Believe so. This for the intro to uh, Street Jokes. Oh boy. All right. Eight four four Rock God. Eight four four Rock God. Uh, Frankie Poughkeepsie, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie B. Hey. How do you get? How do you get an unpregnant? How do you get a nun pregnant? You fucker. Okay, that was a little blunt. Blunt. But I get it. I get it. Instead of <laughs> sometimes the simple answer yeah. <laughs> is what he's saying. Sometimes it's the simple answer. Here's Eric in Nebraska. Hey, but Bennington. So uh how many how many Jews can you fit in a Mini Cooper? Uh I would imagine the same as Goyam, but what do you got? Two in the front, two in the back, four million in the ashtray. Oh, oh my God! No. It's still no, no. It's still too soon. Look. Oh, she looks great. There's Brooke. Come on Brooke. in, Brooke, real quick. She's here in fucking two months. Jesus. Brooke, come on in. Hi. By the way, and this is my cousin. No, Hi. come on in. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. You look good. Thanks. Thanks. You so much. Brooke, how you feeling? I'm feeling okay. You feel you look fantastic. Yeah. Who uh, you been working I with look lately? Like crap. Yeah. What? Who you been working with lately? We um, never see you around. I've been working on um, jo- um, the Catholic Channel mostly. Oh, good. You know any good street jokes? We're doing all street jokes today. Um, I don't know any good street jokes. Well, here's one. I'm going to give you one. So this lady comes home. And she says to her husband, she goes, I was at the shoe store. I sat down to get a pair of shoes. The guy was putting my shoes on me. He looked up my dress and said, oh, I could fill you up with ice cream and just eat it right up. She (laughs) goes, I want you to go back to that shoe store and kick his ass. Husband says, look, I'm going to tell you three things. One, I don't know why you're shopping for shoes. You got 52 pairs of shoes in there. Two, what are you doing trying shoes on with no panties? And three, I ain't fighting no man that can eat two gallons of ice cream. (laughs) Her vagina was very, very large. And anyone who could eat that much ice cream would surely be a good fighter. Here's uh, Levon. Levon in Georgia. Levon, what's your street joke? Uh, All right, what's the difference between a fat, ugly girl and a refrigerator? A fat, ugly girl and a refrigerator. This is Brooke and her beautiful cousin. (laughs) What is the difference between the two of them? One has a plug? uh, The refrigerator doesn't follow you around for two weeks after you put the meat in it. Oh, my (laughs) God. That reminds me of Chris with all the sex he's having. Yeah, it's so true. (laughs) It's not so much funny as is true. Yes, and that's good. Uh, Tim in Jersey. Tim. Hey guys. Yeah. Why can't Why can't Smokey the Bear get his wife pregnant? What? Why is that? Yeah. Uh, every time she gets a little hot, he beats her with a shovel. Oh my God! Oh. See, Smokey the Bear. He likes to put out forest fires, yeah, and if she thing. gets hot, mm-hmm. Smokey just beats her with a shovel. <laughs> Charles, North Carolina. You got a street joke. Yeah, so the Pope is going to visit a small seaside convent on a Friday. That's so sweet. they send a nun out to catch a fish. Yeah. Uh, and she catches this huge fish, and as she's walking off the pier, a fisherman says, Look at that, some bitch. And she says, Such language. And he says, No, that's what kind of fish it is. So when she gets to the convent, she gives it to another nun to clean it, and she says, What kind of fish is this? And she says, It's a some bitch. The nun cleans it and gives it to another nun to cook it. And the nun asks, what kind of fish is this? She says, it's a sun bitch. And she cooks it, and then the Pope arrives. And they feed it to him. He says, that was delicious. Who made this wonderful meal? The first nun says, I caught the sun bitch. And the next nun says, I cleaned the sun bitch. And the last nun says, and I cooked the sun bitch. The Pope looks at them. Then he puts his feet up on the table and says, you motherfuckers are all right. All right, there we go. (laughs) 
because cursing is fun. <laughs> it is fun. And, and they made it a safe place to curse yeah, for the Pope. They did. Yeah, and suddenly he got kind of <laughs> 70s black. <laughs> I like um, that part. Dave, Jive Pope. <laughs> Dave in Maryland. Dave. All right, so a little Irish lady gets a knock on the door, and it's the priest. And the priest says, Mrs. O'Leary, I'm sorry to tell you, but your husband died today. The brewery, he died. He drowned in a vat of beer. And, of course, she's devastated, right? I mean, it's her husband, or the father of her children. She says, Father, I've got to know, at least did he die quickly? And the priest says, oh, not really. Actually, he got out about four times to pee. <laughs> the Irish, they sure do drink a lot. They do. Sounds. They drink a lot. <laughs> They love it. <laughs> yeah, I guess because they're just uh, an entire race of alcoholics. Yeah. Hopeless alcoholics. I uh, mean, that's what I went for. <laughs> uh, Sean in New York. Hey, how do you stop a Polish tank? How do you stop... Uh, by the way, I have it up as how do you stop a Polish skank. So, <laughs> no, tank. Yes, I get it. I was just saying my own little joke. How do you stop a Polish tank? You shoot the people that are pushing it. So World War II jokes are still <laughs> yeah. fun to this day. And Polish jokes. Yeah. Well, when's They're the, alive and well. When's the last time you saw a tank under any circumstances, <laughs> let alone a Polish one? Craig. Craig. In Long Island. Yeah, hi. Uh, guy's driving down the street. sees three tampons on the side of the road, so he waves hello. Which one waves back? I don't know which. <laughs> None. They're all stuck up cunts. Here's uh, Bruce and PA. Hey, good uh, uh, good afternoon, Ron. I want to let you know I called you before the break, and I'm 38 days sober. Congratulations, so my, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Here's my street joke. What do you call a herd of cattle masturbating? A herd of cattle masturbating. What's that, Bruce? Beef stroganoff. Mm, I'm looking around now. Mm, no. Mm, All right, Bruce, you came 30. close. We'll be doing these again. Here's John. In Indianapolis. Father and son are walking down the street, and the son says, Dad, what's a vagina look like? He said, well, well, before sex or after sex? The kid says, I, I don't know, both. The dad says, well, before sex, ever see a beautiful red rose right before it opens with a little bit of morning dew on it? He said, okay, well, what about after sex? Ever see a bulldog eating mayonnaise? You know, we're struggling right now. Yes. Let's have, we need to go big guns. It's almost cheating to do this. It's Chuck in North Carolina. Chuck. <laughs> okay, this is kind of disgusting, but here we go. Uh -oh. you, you, know, you know how to make a dog quit humping your leg? How's that? You pick it up and start sucking its dick. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm looking around, I huh? You. Huh? I, I told you. Hey, told Chuck, you pretty good prize closet, yeah! my friend. Yeah. Pretty good prize closet. Chuck, you know what you're going home with? You're going home with Shakes the Clown, signed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Wow! Yeah. That, All right. that would have been my favorite, actually. Now, here's the thing. What do you mean going home with? He's not here with us now. <laughs> He's already home. So that would work if we were all in a studio together, <laughs> Beto. I'm sorry. I was just trying to. I, I was just excited for him. No, you were making it exciting. I was just pointing out the the logic problem that we had. He's staying home with the prize. Yes. You know what? You're staying home with. You're staying home with Shakes the Clown. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a great one. That's a fucking hilarious movie too. I'm nowhere even near my favorite of the Bobcats though. What's your favorite Bobcat? That goes back. And fourth, but I'm going to go world's greatest dad right now, today. That's a great one. But I have a lot of favorites with him. God damn. He's a great filmmaker. Can uh, I pick Call Me Lucky? What's that? Can I pick Call Me Lucky? Sure. <laughs> yes, you can. Speaking of which, I was uh, getting some updates on that accident. Yeah. Uh, they're lucky to be alive. Wow. They are Call Me Lucky time. Yeah. It sounds like he was really shaken up. Uh, yeah, the whole, you know how, like, when you get in the accident, uh, that everything just feels like... Yeah, your body like hurts. But I also your nerve is hurt, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you have a reality little post has been pulled. Yeah, you have a little post-traumatic stress, and it takes a while to feel normal again. Yeah. It's ugly. Uh, here's, uh, Danny. Mm. Dude. Dude. Mm. Dude. Jesus. 
That's it. Anybody? That should anybody. <laughs> <laughs> anybody. You could have you could have just said first black guy. Uh Joe. Anybody? Texas. Yes, uh what do you get? Or no, not what do you get. Uh what what does a tornado and a woman have in common? What does a tornado and a woman have in common? They scream when they're coming and take the house when they're going. <laughs> that's pretty that's good. A, uh oh. <laughs> that's this is rising. Pretty good prize closet. I'm surprised. It start it low. Start it low. What's he going home with, Vito? <laughs> He's staying home with Naval Gazing, the book signed by Michael Ian Black. Nice. That's a good book. Nice. That's great. I that's love that book. book. That's a really good book. Uh, we already did Dave's joke there on uh, line seven. Somebody else already brought that up earlier today. Uh, Chris Stanley, you got another joke. Okay. Uh, did you hear about the constipated... <laughs> Did you just Hold say, on, on. Did you hear that's about the best? Like I love that. <laughs> yeah. Like that one doesn't exist anymore. Like I that's know. grandpappy status. Did you hear about the one? I, I, I see uh, Anthony Kuvi is here tonight. <laughs> did you hear the one about? <laughs> that is, what was that old fight? It was like the uh, Southern laughing hee haw. Yeah, that's like a fucking hee haw bit. All right. So did you hear about what? Did you hear about the constipated mathematician? No. Try to work it out with a pencil. Bingo. Yeah. You're really, you're looking up these jokes. <laughs> it was middle school. It was getting killed then. You know, uh, it always helps to have a professional comedian do a street joke because he has that delivery. Look who it is. It's Tommy Johnigan. Nice! Tommy Johnigan. Nice! Oh, guys, I love these fucking street jokes. My dad was a truck driver. So I just heard these on the CB for most of my life. And they, get, they get racist quick on the CB, but oh yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens in no time. Yeah, you gotta watch it. Uh, one of my favorites. I don't know if anybody's been told it. I, I've only been listening for like fifteen, but uh, there's a little nine-year-old boy sitting on a park bench smoking a cigarette, and this guy walks up and he says, "Hey, son, did you know cigarettes can lead to lung cancer?" And lung cancer leads to a very painful death. It'll cut your life short, and you're going to die a very painful death. The kid takes a big drag of his cigarette, and he goes, My grandma is 95 years old, and she's still alive. And the guy goes, Does she smoke? And he goes, No, but she minds her fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You just won tickets to the next Tommy Johnigan show. Yeah! <laughs> you're the best, Tommy. Thanks. Um, that's funny as shit. <laughs> that's funny as shit. I like, um, uh, I like, uh, so, so far I think the highlight is the, did you hear the one about? <laughs> because there was no reason to say that. You had to be reading it right now. There's, it's not, well, it's not in front of me. There's just, there's well, not. why would you say, do you hear the one about? Because it's fun to say that. No, it he's isn't. an old man. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> hear the one about, uh. <laughs> Uh, here's Mike in Syracuse. Welcome to Street Jokes. Hey, Ronnie B. Hey, Gail. I asked my, uh, I told my boys I'm going to try and get in the pretty big prize closet, and I need a joke. So this is the one I got. Right. What did the left nut say to the right nut? What did the left nut say to the right nut? Don't talk to the guy in the middle. He's a dick. <laughs> I'm looking at Gail's an easy laugher here. I like jokes. I'm like, are you? <laughs> you guys are gonna have to decide. I like most jokes. What did you think, Chris? Anybody? I, I don't think it's going to the prize. <laughs> and closet. you thought so, yes? Yeah, I voted yes. Vito, what did you think? I don't I don't think that's prize closet worthy. Here's what I love about it. He got it from his kids. Pretty good prize yeah! closet. Yeah! Pretty good prize closet. <laughs> Made it a family thing. <laughs> Well, you know what you can enjoy with the family? What's is that? the Waterboy DVD signed by Henry Winkler. Oh! oh love it! Hey! Hey! Hey, hey, hey it's the, the thumbs. Hey. He forgot how to do the thumbs. Chris. <laughs> so, last night, the reason why I brought up the uh, Barry Crimmins to you is I ran into uh, Rob Mayhew, mm -hmm. and he was driving. He was oh, really? driving, yeah. And he said it was like a bad night, and earlier in the night, 
they had to get out of the way of a, a, a truck that uh, had ice problems and stuff like that. So it, uh, what do you call that when it hooks like? It's like not jackhammer, but uh, jack knife. Jack knife. Jack knife. Yeah. Thank you. Jackhammer would be. <laughs> so they were already like, oh shit. And then this thing came up. He said they were kind of going underneath the truck and everything at first. Oh my God. Yeah. He was still a little, he's still a little on an edge with it. That's really scary. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know that he was driving for some reason. That didn't even enter my mind. I didn't even think who was driving. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's uh, Bill in California. What's up, Bill? Hey, how's it going today, man and women? Yes. Hey. I, I got a bad. Nice. I got a bad joke for you. All right. There's a uh, there's a gay couple up in San Francisco, and they're planning a trip down to San Diego. The same weekend, there's a lesbian couple up there, and they're planning to drive down to San Diego as well. Which couple gets there first, and why? Tell us. Well, the lesbians get there first because they're going lickety-split 69 the whole way while the fags are back at their condo packing their stuff. You see how old some of these it's jokes are? You know what I mean? Like that that just has a complete seventies vibe. <laughs> the entire joke. Uh Tom in Texas. Yeah, you there, Bennington's? Hey man. Hey, uh, so there's a black guy walks into a bar with a gorgeous parrot on his shoulder. Bartender looks up and's like, Oh man, cool. Where did you get that? And the parrot goes, Africa, there's millions of them. Oh, my oh, God. These oh are no. so old school. Uh, Nick in Baltimore. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so there are these two junkies under a bridge, and they're shooting dope. And the one guy takes a needle, he shoots up. second guy grabs a needle right out of his hand, and he shoots up. The first guy says, hey, be careful, man. You can get AIDS that way. And the second guy says, relax, I'm wearing a condom. <laughs> First of all, again, how old the joke very old is. school. <laughs> That's at least the 80s. But I always did wonder, why are people always shooting dope under a bridge? I don't know. That's where they go, under yeah. the bridge downtown. That's where I drew some blood. By the way, I just want to go back because I just want to say that this is something that is always funny. It's like when you hear somebody tell a street joke and they emphasize something that they don't need to. <laughs> then previous guys like a beautiful <laughs> parrot on his shoulder. <laughs> and I was like, why was that hit so hard? <laughs> he loved it. He loved. It. He had to get that across. This wasn't just any parrot. <laughs> I mean, it was a beautiful. Gorgeous parrot. <laughs> Uh, Diane in Ohio. Hi. Yeah. What's up? Okay. How did the golfer break his arm? How, How did the golfer break his arm? He fell off the ball washer. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. <laughs> That's good. Appreciate it. Uh, Shelly, Illinois. Hey, how's it going? Great. So this guy, this guy goes and he visits his wife every day for a year. She's in the hospital in a coma. And one day he goes in and the nurse comes in to see him and she said, you know, I just want to let you know, when I was giving her her sponge bath yesterday, when I was washing her vagina, she moaned a little bit and started to move. I think maybe if you gave her oral sex, she would come out of her coma. And the guy's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And she's like, I think it might work. It's worth trying. And he's like, no, I don't feel comfortable here doing that. And she said, you know what, we'll close the curtains. We'll be right in the nurse's station across the hall. We'll monitor. I, I think it's worth a shot. So he says, okay. So the nurse closes the curtains, goes into the nurse's station. She's waiting. And all of a sudden, the lady flatlines. The nurse goes, why in there? She goes, what happened? He goes, I think she choked. Say what he <laughs> Yeah. He put his penis in her mouth. <laughs> I like it. You guys oh, you're going it. with it. I like it. Pretty good prize closet, Vito. <laughs> Thank you. I got a great book for you. It's What's So Funny, signed by Tim Conway. Nice. Wow. Very cool. Wow, you're giving away some great prizes today. Street jokes. Street jokes. All right, one more. One more winner before we go. Uh, Josh in New Jersey, what do you got for street jokes? Uh, how you fit four gays on one bar stool? Well, back in 1953, when this joke was written, you used to have to turn the bar stool upside down. <laughs> um, here is, and that that joke only works if you're somewhere where you have a bar stool, right? You know what I mean? Like it, the visual you, helps. Yeah, the visual helps. Well, what you always do when you would turn the bar stool upside down and go like this. 
Lance, party of four. Lance, party of four. <laughs> Old school comic <laughs> bit. Uh, Justin in Minnesota. What's up? How, how can an Italian tell if you have multiple flat tires? I, I remember this one from when I was a little kid. They go up, they go down, they go wop, wop, wop. <laughs> uh, let's go over here. Nathan in Colorado. Hey, what do you call a deer with no eyes? A, an no ear? Eye deer. All right, let's no. start from what the beginning. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes? A deer with no eyes. What's that? No idea. Adorable. It's pretty it's cute. Adorable it's joke. Cute. Um, John in Phoenix. Hey guys, uh, how do you make a hormone? Put your dick in her. It's street jokes, everybody. <laughs> One more winning joke, and off we go. Phyllis, Phyllis in DC. Yes. Horrible joke. Okay. What do you tell a woman with two black eyes? Um. Tell us. Nothing. You already told us twice. Oh, <laughs> forgot that one. I remember that one. Yeah. No, not giving it to her. All right. Sorry, Phyllis. <laughs> I remember Came it. so damn close. I forgot all about that joke. Uh, here's uh, Brandon in Indiana. Hey, guys. Love the show. Yeah, it is good. Uh, <laughs> so a guy walks into a bar, and, uh, you know, there's a hot waitress behind the bar, and he sees a sign on the wall that says, Two sandwiches, two dollars. Hand jobs, five dollars. So he leans in close and answers. He says, "Excuse me, miss, but are you the ones that gives the hand jobs?" And she says, "Yes, I am." He says, "Well, wash your hands and make me a cheese sandwich." Okay. <laughs> Here's that in Missouri. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Okay, so this guy's in the bar and he's drinking all day and all night, and it's the wee hours of the morning. And he starts to call, go home, and the bartender says, "Hey, you're not driving, are you?" He goes, now nah, I'm walking home. So he starts walking home, and he's a Scottish guy with a kilt. And he comes across this grass little area, you know, and he, he's feeling tired. He goes, I'm going to lay down and take a little nap. So he does that. And these schoolgirls in the morning come across them, and they all, you know, find him, and they, like, wondering what's underneath, the like, Scottish guy's wearing, wears underneath his kilt. So they talk a bunch of women, and I take a peek. And the one girl takes out a ribbon out of her hair and ties a little bow on it, and they giggle and go off to school. He wakes up, he's got to pee really bad. So he trembles, stumbles over to the bushes. He lifts it up and he goes, I love you, I don't know where you've been, but I see you won first prize. Uh, I'm sorry, I stopped paying attention a couple <laughs> minutes ago. I got completely lost on that. Uh, here is uh, Mike, Mike in Brooklyn. Mike, one more winner today. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, man. What do pantyhose and Brooklyn have in common? Pantyhose and Brooklyn, what do they have in common? Yeah. Go ahead. Flatbush. Flatbush. Flat uh, <laughs> you like that? Local. Local, yep. like local, local references. references that you get. I get I know the flat, reference. I know where Flatbush is. The Avenue. The Avenue. <laughs> uh, Dave in Columbus. How, how do you tell an Italian airliner? <laughs> how, how do you tell an Italian airliner? It's the one with hair under the wings. <laughs> oh, my God. Joe, in New <laughs> That's Mexico. old school, too. Yeah, it is. Yes, sir. I told this joke every day when we were stationed in Iraq. All right. I usually got boots thrown at me and everything else. All right. But uh, a bear and a rabbit were sitting in the woods taking a dump. Mm. The bear looks over at the rabbit and says, Mr. Rabbit, do you have problems with boots sticking to your fur? The rabbit said, no. Nope. The bear picked him up and wiped his butt with him. It's a uh, it's a fine joke, but maybe a little overtold. Maybe just yeah. a tad. Just a over it's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, uh, Jay in Connecticut. Hey, buddy, this is the worst joke ever, but oh. it's hilarious to me. So this guy's walking home, and he sees a snail on the ground. He picks up the snail and throws it in the woods. Three years later, he hears a knock on the door. Opens up the door, and the snail goes, "What the fuck was that for?" <laughs> Cute. That's a cute joke. <laughs> I like any kind of snail joke. I don't get enough snail jokes. Corey in Michigan. Two guys are walking down the road and they see a dog licking himself. And one guy says, man, I wish I could do that. And the other guy says, man, I should probably pet him first. Here's Jack in Vegas. Jack. <laughs> hey, I hope anybody, uh, I hope nobody's told this yet. I just turned on the radio. Here it right. goes. Uh, 
This hillbilly guy takes his, his daughter uh, to the doctor. He says, uh, I need to put her on birth control. And the doctor says, sir, she's 13 years old. Is she sexually active? He goes, no, she just pretty much lays there like her mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boom. Wait a minute. Is this it? Is this it? <laughs> That's it. That's oh it. God, That's Hold on. So does it go? Does he win? Throw him in there. Oh, you are, Jack. Jack, your pedophile joke, incestuous pedophile joke, just made you the final winner of street jokes today. And our final winner is going to get in the mail to him. Hot Fuzz, the DVD signed by Simon Pegg. Holy Whoa, shit. that's a great one. Movie star signing his big movie. All right, that's really good stuff. The street jokes, like, at least replay the beginning and see if that'll be like a production thing. This guy comes in the bar, walks up to the bartender. He says, bartender, I got me a bet for you. It's time for Street Jokes. There's an old couple in bed, Mary and Paddy, and they wake up on the morning of their 50th anniversary. Call in now at 844-ROCK-GOD with your best street joke for a chance to win. It reminds me of my favorite poem, which is, uh, Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a schizophrenic, so am I. <laughs> it's Street Jokes. All right, that's it for uh, Street Jokes. We promise to play again another week or two or whenever we remember. That was so much fun. I'm going to use great. those. Oh, <laughs> God, I forgot them all. <laughs> I forgot them all. Uh, but I always wanted to do a uh, a night of just Street Jokes where people can come up on stage. That would be great. Tell a joke. Maybe we'll have Martling there as a judge or something. We'll be back. Bennington. It's the Bennington Show. First time we did street jokes in a long time. Uh, Chris, somebody said that you were dumping out of street jokes. I didn't dump out. I, I so, not Vito, them. you didn't dump out, right? No, I didn't dump out. Someone said that somebody was dumping out. I don't know where if it happened, if it didn't happen here. Or somebody just heard an awkward moment and thought it was a right. dump out. Sometimes <laughs> we just like to be incredibly awkward. <laughs> um, all right, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to announce the Highlander uh, winner a later, a little later on today. We had three finalists, of course, the great Mitchell Walters, Jim Florentine, and Robbie Slovic. By the way, all great. I didn't, I didn't just mean to say that Mitchell was great right. and the other two weren't. It was like the great, and then all yeah. of the following are great. Thank you. That's where I was going with that. That's what I picked up on. All right. So we're going to, uh, I think, have Robbie and Jim in studio. And Mitchell on the phone. Uh, one of my favorite things up on the iBank today are the two Aussie anchors fighting over uh, who gets to wear white. Um, the anchor did not want <laughs> someone else wearing white. And um, uh, let's just play a little bit of it. I need Julie to put a jacket on because we're all in white. I asked her. I asked her before we came on. Julie, you need to put a jacket on. Flat out. I, I haven't had time. Does someone? Come on! I told you. I told you two hours ago. We know Amber, in chat room. This is not. So I'm sorry. I've been flat out. Well, honestly. I'll call wardrobe and we'll get something. No, if, you, if, I, if if you give me a second, if we can ask, I, I'm not sure who your lineup is today. If if there's a, just a jacket floating around out there, ask Danica. Unless you want to run down and see if there's a jacket. No, you're right. No, open. you're right. Because you told me um, it's fine, Sandy, but there can't be three of us. No. And I, I made this clear <laughs> two and a half hours ago. Amber, if it's an issue, I can, I can get on yeah, out of here. It is an issue. Go and grab a jacket. I, <sighs> Jenny, someone, is someone able to grab me a jacket, please? <laughs> If it's an issue, I, I can... I wasn't saying it for no reason. The wardrobe girls would be furious downstairs. I'm wearing I'm... blue for one, Amber. I, I don't know, want to be having this. I know, but it doesn't look like it. it. Someone, Jenny, get someone, in, a producer. I told her this two and a half... There's one hanging up outside the control room. Just get it on. There's a black one hanging up. There's a black one hanging up on the back if of there's, my if, one. If there's an issue, I'm, I can just head on out and get back to work because I'm, I'm <laughs> flat chat. I genuinely forgot. I, I, I broke... Uh, I made this, I told you. If it's an issue, I'll just jump on out, honestly. Fine. Jump on uh, out. Stop it there. All right, now two things. Number one, 
You can see that they're close together because they both know where the jacket is. Yes. Right? So these things where you watch a show and there's three boxes, it doesn't mean that these uh, people aren't just eight feet apart. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask the two ladies, would it be a problem of two people wearing white on TV at the same time? I don't think so. I don't think so either. The thing is, I mean, like, I understand what she's saying. It's like the row all three of them were wearing. I would One not notice as not... a viewer. <laughs> I mean, how many times you turn on, you see three guys in, in a black suit or a blue suit? It's common. Yeah. <laughs> Flat chat, she forgot. <laughs> Flat chat, which I love that phrase. I don't know Flat what that, chat. What's that mean? I don't know. I've never heard From it, but Jump I, assume, Street? I, I assume that she's saying, like, I'm talking straight with you. I actually right. forgot. So it's flat chat. Right, flat let's chat. Let's try to steal that. Flat chat, I forgot. Okay. Amba. Amba. I'll put it over. Who do you relate to, Gail? You um, think? Actually, the one that I found most relatable was the girl on the right who's not being forced to change her white shirt, but is laughing uncomfortably <laughs> while she yells at her, you need to put on a jacket. See, I could see if they were fighting over content. You know what I mean? Right. But I don't understand. I would have not picked up on everyone was wearing a white fucking dress any more than I would everybody's wearing a black suit. It happens in life. And I like that the one is like, the one is going like, I could just leave if that's what you want. I know, like, she's just like, and she's like, I'm not asking you to leave. I'm asking you to put on a fucking jacket. Right. <laughs> but at no point does she go, I'll put on the jacket. Mm. She's like, no. You're putting on a jacket. It's insane to yell at someone to put on a jacket. Unmasked with Nick DiPaolo uh, coming up. Let him know we're not both wearing white shirts. <laughs> I will let uh, him know. Wardrobe will let him know. Wednesday, February 8th at the stand. 8 o'clock at night. That's uh, the incredibly funny Nick DiPaolo Unmasked. This is the set up. Um, do a little publicity for his... New special, Inflammatory, which premieres Thursday, February 16th on CISO. Go to com for a chance at free tickets. That's February 8th, 8 o'clock at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City. Uh, Nick DiPaolo on Mass. That's going to be a blast. I got a chance to see him working out that material, and he is so funny. He's so goddamn funny. He's crazy funny. Um... All right, remember yesterday I was talking about the praying mantis, right? Mm hmm Chris, put it up. It's up on the eye bank today. I told this story before. I'm a little kid, and I crawled right into it. I never saw a praying mantis before in my life, and I crawled face-to-face -face with it. Now, just I want you guys to watch this to see how this looks like a being more than a bug. All right, go ahead and hit it, Chris. So here's a praying mantis. The guy's taking pictures. And the praying mantis... Look oh. as it turns. That doesn't look like an alien in the Spielberg movie. Oh. Look at its face. Oh my god! There's now it, it's there. you can see it's pissed. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> now if, if if Chris would have had the volume up, you would have heard the fucking dude screaming. <laughs> the dude was fucking freaking out. What? Is, oh my god! Like, see. That is the worst thing when you're looking at a bug close and you're like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And it flies in your face. There's no way to no. stay cool. <laughs> this may be sexist, but he screamed like a woman. I, I would agree. That sounded as a woman's scream. <laughs> That's a giant prank, man. It's huge. That seems to go right along with the stripper pole one that went there. No, I don't know if that is a giant prank, mantis. That's the same size as the one that I saw. Yeah. I had one that was living outside of my kitchen window mm -hmm. last summer. And this thing was, I, I mean, right. huge. So, yeah, they're all big. Massive. And what do they eat? They eat like flies or something, right? I think that they do. Are they plants. Do they eat meat? I don't know. I, I don't know if a fly is meat. I Maybe it is for you. <laughs> Go to the stripper pole one. Um, this one says you'll probably react to the stripper trick the same way as this dude, which is an oddly long title. <laughs> That's an oddly long title. Uh, on mass coming up, Nick DiPaolo. Go to the iBank for tickets. It's 8 o'clock at night. 
We're going to be drinking it up, enjoying ourselves, you know what I mean? This ain't some daytime goddamn serious almost. It's, it's party time. We're going to enjoy our cocktails. Um, anyway, a lot of great stuff on, on the iBank today. Chris, you just told me that Monday's a holiday? Monday's MLK Day. I did not know that. In my mind, MLK Day was in February. Yeah, I it, it always sneaks up on me. I never remember that it's in January. All right, let's uh, watch this. I have seen. Wait a minute. Let me just say this for the guy where the guy's freaking out. I've seen strippers do that at every club I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> Why is he acting like it's a brand new thing? He I don't know. It's all about it. his reaction. He also <laughs> looks exactly like the guy who's in a lot of Spike Lee films. Which one? The, I, if I knew the name, I yeah. wouldn't be able to tell you. If you go to any, go to uh, School Days and click through the the top actors and you'll see the guy that I'm talking about. He's in most Spike Lee films. Until you see the guy that looks like that. The, one, the uh, one from Breaking Bad? Yes. Oh, John Carlo Esposito. Thank you. Thank Put up a picture you, of him. You know what I want to say to that praying mantis? Thank you, mantis. That's no, from TR. Thank you, mantis. That's from TR. <laughs> Doesn't look oh, just yeah, like he that does dude? look like him. Look, <laughs> totally. That's exactly oh, the same. <laughs> Let me see the trick one more time. Because, like, I was so focused on his reaction of him going bananas. Okay. He's drinking because she straight dropped from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> but haven't you ever seen that gimmick before? It's uh, it's like a gymnastics move. Well, I have never seen it in person. The only strip club I've ever been to was in um, Montreal, and it was graphic, but there was not a terrible amount of gymnastics. Oh, I've that seen went on. some places that were just straight <laughs> gymnastics. Uh, and Jen, I'm sure you back me up because you worked high yeah. class strip clubs yeah no like the things i used to see would be like mesmerizing i'd be in front like checking ids and i look over and be like oh my god yeah there's some really talented people acrobatic and jen had to wear a thong the whole time she worked (laughs) jen you did (laughs) Did id please did you let your parents know that you were working yeah my dad came to visit me with his girlfriend one time that is so sweet but they have Um, really good steak so they just want to the the number of places first of all (laughs) Any, first of all, any trucker always has a story of a fucking titty bar that has amazing steaks, steaks the size of your plate. (laughs) There's always these things. And I have to say this. I've never gotten good food. I'm my, I had a friend who is a chef and his dream is to like have a classy steakhouse slash strip joint it's everybody's you can smoke cigars there <laughs> yeah you could do coke whatever you want to do i believe the working title was steak and legs but i could be wrong <laughs> well then you should have crab legs with it <laughs> yeah, give the me the steak legs. And legs steak and legs please um let's go to the high school basketball player shattering the backboard now this used to happen all the time when i was a kid and they actually had to change the way that backboards are built so that the rims would break and the rims would come down, but not the entire backboard. This used to happen all the time in the 70s. Go ahead, Chris. Well, watch this kid. He's in high school. Oh, Underneath the basket now. Oh, Whoa! Hell yeah. It's fucking awesome. Broke the backboard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that wow. thing just shattered. Look at Kenny. Look at, look at that could just Broke go home. No. <laughs> and uh, it was always Daryl Dawkins with the Sixers that would do it. They called him Chocolate Thunder. And he would just come down and destroy. Now, they would switch out the backboard. It would take like 45 minutes or whatever. But I'm sure there's not another backboard at a high school game. No. This you just guys ended. Are done. Look, people are running outside. <laughs> uh, their excitement is so big, they have run outside. <laughs> I need to leave this room right now. <laughs> this is over. 
Vito, you gave out a <laughs> lot of good prizes today. Wow. Almost too many, if you know what I'm saying. Because we need to keep this bet going. Because we are big fans of street jokes. Yeah. Well, first of all, you gave fun. out really great prizes. And Gail's an easy laugher. I'm an easy laugh. I like a joke. Uh, Chris Stanley, on the other hand, stayed as quiet as could be on a Friday uh, the 13th because he's a gambler and he's worried about jinxes all the time. I don't like this at all. I just, when I realized it's Friday the 13th. Not only was it Friday the 13th, I crossed the biggest funeral I ever saw today. Really? Yeah, there was, they had that funeral for the cop. Oh, yeah. Has been paralyzed since 1986. Yeah. Fifth Avenue was shut. 30 blocks, something wow. like that, lined up with cops for 30 blocks. I had to already go down to the 30s to, to come across. I never saw. I mean, at Thanksgiving Day Parade, you can c- cross easier than you could for that. And they had speakers up because I guess they were doing it at St. Patrick's. So I got a funeral on Friday the 13th, the same Happening day. Happening together. Yeah. And do you feel like that? Did, did it make you feel a little superstitious? Not. Not at all. Stitious, at least. Lightly, okay. mildly stitious. Yeah. I, I felt stitious. <laughs> I felt semi-stitious. Chris, you're, so you are superstitious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe in jinxes. I believe they're totally 100% real. And Friday the 13th fucking weirds me out. And what is the one that you are, is to you, is the biggest jinx? Um, all right. So uh, well, well, one superstition I have is when I used to smoke, if I didn't put out a cigarette, if I didn't stamp it out, I thought something terrible was going to happen. It had to be stamped. It had to be stamped. Out. <laughs> I could. I that already, sounds I, like obsessive compulsive. Can I tell you something though? Well, that's what superstition is. It's right. Uh, it's th- it's like the, minus the f- folklore of it. Well, you're giving it. Yeah, you're doing. You're giving a thing. Step on your crack. Break mm-hmm. your mama's back. I mean, that's really OCD stuff. People are always doing that, or yeah. it's bad luck all the time with it. But with Chris, and he's saying stamp out. He would stamp out things. On the rug in someone's home. Oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, Chris! Like he wouldn't put it. I mean, he. Well, you seen him when he smoked. What the what it would look like underneath him? Yeah, at, a, at a park bench. Vito, you superstitious at all? I'm incredibly superstitious when it comes to sports, like watching. And uh, for my whole childhood, I had a foam finger that I got at my first Mets game that everybody called, like, the lucky foam finger. <laughs> Who's everybody? Why would they? Leslie. All my friends who I went to games with, like, when I was a kid, like, would legit say, pull out the foam finger when we were down <laughs> by one or two. You're and a lot of times, in that. No, but listen, a lot of times we'd win. A lot of times we'd win this the game. The whole crowd would go, Vito, Vito, <laughs> And then, Vito. lucky foam finger, <laughs> lucky foam <laughs> finger. I, I lose the foam finger. In 2007, the year the Mets had the famous collapse. Dude, you don't have that kind of power. I'm telling you, that was all me. You don't have the power that the Mets gave way to the Phils. I do, and that's the reason the Phillies won the World Series. Well, then get another foam finger and wipe your ass with it, because I could use the Phils being back. (laughs) (laughs) Now, that's always the thing, is you could be superstitious about something, but then you hear somebody else is superstitious, and you're like, that's dumb. That doesn't work. This one's serious, though. The only one that I am really, really weird about is new shoes on the table. And I think that that was like my grandmother told me that. I think you like said that was like a. Both your grandmothers are very superstitious people. And I don't know why. They call it Catholic, but it's the same thing. I'll dive across the room to knock somebody's new shoes off. I don't like a hat on a bed. Hat on a bed is weird. And the table, too. Yeah. Hat like, on a table. Hat on a table. My parents were all about that. Don't put the hat on the table. It's bad luck. You know what? That's fucking junkie superstition. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not even making you that just up. combined two. Oh. New shoes on the, on you know the table, I, hat on the bed. You know what his mom didn't believe on? Plate on the table. <laughs> Food on the Where table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jen's like, aw. Every night. You know what he would say instead of dinner? Where's the hostess? Because he would sit there and just eat a cupcake every night. It was, it was good, though. It was delicious. <laughs> You and this girl just get right into it, huh? Yeah. But I've only seen her twice. How's the sex, though? It's good. She's crazy. It, yeah. Oh. All kinds of crazy shit. But, I, but I know, I just, she's just crazy. She's, she's crazy. much hotter oh. than your ex, though, huh? In bed? She's, she's just she's an attractive young lady. But is she much hotter in bed? She's, in bed. I, I'm not. Is she, f- she's, is she friskier? She's, fu- she's different. Feistier. She's yeah. different in bed. She's a dirty talker? No. no I don't like that, then. I say you got to do some dirty talking, honey. I have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward if we don't talk. Well, I just, you got to get filthy. I, I know this isn't, this isn't going to go anywhere, but I'm having fun. I know she's going to get back together with this weirdo boyfriend. 
She's still talking about him on the second date? Oh, yeah. yeah I get updates. I Great. Updates. Good. Like, what's going on During with him? During sex? I, I'm not giving out she talks any about. details. <laughs> Does he look at the jail time? I don't believe so, no. As far as I know. But you think he's going to come back and kill you? Um, I think something could happen if he found out who I am. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to let him know. Please don't, Ron. Please. Get it out there. Please For don't. my own fucking reasons, though. Nothing to do with you. Fuck, <laughs> it's going to affect me really badly. <laughs> mm. But I'm going to think I'm going to see another girl this weekend, so that's cool. Different that? so this, entirely. A, a different girl, yeah. Right, let me take you a look at her, Gator Boy. yourself. Oh, and then one of the J-Swipe uh, girls got back to me. Why are you screaming about it? Why not just be a person? <laughs> <laughs> Excited. Oh, look at that tatted up on him. It's like a fucking comic book. <laughs> Tall, tattooed, tomboy. Quirky Aquarius. Oh, Abrasive is. exterior. Delicate interior. That's Oh, sweet. that sounds oh. nice. Right? She's got a BA in psychology. And then a fucking arm that looks like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dislikes. Let's see. Pancakes. Chris Love and thing. fish. Hmm. And for that, she says... They don't have eyelids. Good fucking point. Yeah. No reason to trust them. Uh, if you can't hold a conversation or the only line you have is sweet link or sexy tats, don't bother. <laughs> Turn ons. Intelligence. Uh-oh. Uh, and then she said, try to keep up, boys. Uh, boy. Oh, boy. Boy, she's... <laughs> She's a wild thing. Yeah, she's. All right, she's topless here and then has written, Wish You Were Here. Oh, yeah, dude. It's a big Floyd fan. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish you were here. Boys, well, look at this. Uh, eyebrows are a little scary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, that one's fucking rough. I'm a little confused by the eyeliner on that one. You I'll gotta, just. You got to get yeah. in the water line there. You got to get in the water line, the ladies. Water line That's a child Let, that's even doing that. Let's just. I'll just say this. Can't seem to face up to the facts. <laughs> I'm tense and nervous and I can't relax. <laughs> can't sleep because my bed's <laughs> on fire. Don't touch me. Oh, she's a wild one, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Scary. You're gonna get cut up. Yeah. Something. One of these things you're gonna get cut up. I'm a little confused about the eyeliner, but and maybe some of the brow. But <laughs> other than that, I feel good about it. All right, let's see the new. Ooh, she's a quirky Aquarius too. Yeah, oh, what's that mean? It's like me. She's a, yeah. <laughs> this is the dawning of the quirky Aquarius. Aquarius quirky Aquarius. Chris, we're on a new song. <laughs> Aquarius. Time to cut up Stanley. <laughs> slice his balls right off his body. Time to cut up This is the same one as yesterday. No, but but no, but she like fuck, she, you know, she's um um. To, you, to, she's too nice of a girl for you. I don't want that I, I'm to intrigued happen. by it though. And she yeah. thinks I'm Jewish. I want you to be with crazy eyes. Oh, I don't want I'm gonna, this. I'm gonna do my best to be with crazy eyes. <laughs> crazy eyes killer. I can see with a quirky. Yeah, I don't like him lying to Jews. Yeah, I don't like that. Makes me uncomfortable. (laughs) She seems so nice. Yeah, at least the other other girl's bad. She's a bad lady. You can tell. She's a bad mamma jamma. I don't know. This is all bad. (laughs) Can't end well. There's no fucking way. (laughs) See, you're out once you see that he's he's catfishing him to think he's Jay. I don't don't like that. Because, you know, if this young lady has deep feelings for him, and why wouldn't she? Yeah. He's a fucking cat. He is a charmer, Mm -hmm. a sweetheart. Yeah. Sweet talker. (laughs) Are you? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Where are you taking the J-Date to? No idea. I have to to figure that out. I I mean, I'm just... Why don't you take her to a synagogue? That's That's a good idea. Good idea. I don't know if she's kosher or not. Why don't you take her to the stand? I'm gonna be there all weekend. Yeah, do that. Stand oh, date. I got. I gotta get her. To, I gotta get her phone number. Stand and deliver. Maybe uh, take her where we went uh, for our Christmas dinner last year. Oh, she would love that. <laughs> she would love Jewish. it. This is Donnie Love. <laughs> <laughs> 
guess he's going to roast you. <laughs> you know, he, oh, yeah, yeah, What's yeah. Wrong he with says that? sexually assaulting things. It's uh, not a big deal. It's fine. I mean, go with it. It's funny. She's like, what? <laughs> the great Donny Love. <laughs> when he does parody songs, that's oh, what yeah, I Oh, yeah, it's my, so good. That's a Jewish. <laughs> he just throws that and He just throws Jewish. He just throws in any kind of... <laughs> Stupid thing like that. And, and like, it's crazy. He'll use the word you as Jew, but then he starts to run out of ones that make sense. <laughs> and then he'll just be like, Jew made me love Jew. And you're like, I know. What? I go crazy for that <laughs> and then one. And you're now. like, wait, that one doesn't make a sense grammatically. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, you know, the uh, Gotham had a holiday party after Christmas, like we're doing. But now we can't even pull that off because we're going out next week with. With Don, right? Yeah. 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 And then um, who else wants to take us out? Oh, Jack wants to take yeah. us out. Yeah. Which I'm trying to get to just be we got me. A lot. We got a lot because, of. Because, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want this to be about business, not you guys eating. <laughs> I don't want you guys to be seen eating. <laughs> <laughs> We're so hungry. Um, Red Bear wants to jump into this. All right. Hey, Red Bear, what's happening, buddy? Jewish. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Say it again from the top. Karen tells me you're half Jewish. <laughs> Only the good half. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, fellas. Anytime you can throw in a good fellas reference, do it. All right, let's do this without even looking. You think Jen has seen, don't look at her, has seen or not seen good fellas. Gail? I'm going to say have not seen. She's seen it. One hundred percent. No, have I have you? not seen it. Oh Yay! my god! Friday Turns 13th. out, me and Vito know Jen better than Chris. <laughs> How do you not see Goodfellas? It was never us. My parents never talked about it. it Good Goodfellas. How many times you have if you not seen Goodfellas? By the way, that when you tried to do Yiddish yesterday in front of Alan, <laughs> that, was that was the lowest thing. of my life. <laughs> You are your dad's son. You're your dad's like, son. There's he, no way around it. He actually was like, for this we left Egypt. For this we left Egypt. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because that's how it's supposed to be said. Let right? him say it that way, not you. Oh, my God. I just wanted to plug correctly. <laughs> yeah, but a fucking Mexican guy comes in there. You're playing the hat dance. Da -da 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 -da. It comes across a little racist. It's, it's a I, little... It was not racist. It wasn't intended to be racist. It was racist. Oh. It might not intend it to be racist. That's, it's going to be bad for my but, day date. But your ignorance also is appalling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't not, it does it Sometimes you're so ignorant. That you're like, I'm going to blame you like you were racist. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> but this hey, is we love Asia, speaking so of which, did you see the bromance yesterday when uh, the president gave the vice president that award and he started to go? Yeah, I saw it. He loves Barack Obama. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say it. More than Michelle does. That's how much <laughs> yeah. he loves him. They love each other. Yeah. They are brothers. It's insane. Now, has there ever been, have you ever seen a president and a vice president well, get along that well? Let's go back. Uh, Reagan hated the first George Bush. Never even invited him to the parties. They were forced together. Uh, Clinton and Al Gore were very close until the end. And then Al Gore would not use Clinton's for a re-election, and Bill was really hurt. Um, Bush and his uh, VP, Darth Vader, they seemed to be close. <laughs> and then by the end of it, George wasn't... George thought he was getting too much credit or blame. Yeah. So this is rare. But the thing about Joe Biden is... He threw himself into being VP. Most VPs think about themselves, how will I be considered... It's just like Joe has a neediness that to be liked that he I think I believe he wanted Obama to love him. Yeah, I think he did. And they're just like two like just like two good guys hanging out. Like, well, here's the other <laughs> talking thing about good guy stuff. I mean, the only thing, you know, the job of a VP is to support his president no matter what. I, I Legally, I don't even think you're allowed to have different opinions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't go that far. The But they do. 
they try to get their own credit and stuff like this. The only thing that I ever saw where he broke rank was an accident where he said, oh, no, I'm all for gay marriage before the president said it. Right. And then a week or two later, the president had to say, okay, I am too. You know what I mean? Right. He didn't think it would be a politically a good move, but it looked like that was forgiven pretty quickly. Yeah, he he was the first one to say, and it's, it was one of those things where you knew that that was Obama's feeling. I knew it was his feelings the whole time, but he was being strategic about it. I think. yeah, but that's to me. I don't like when people do that. No, I agree, and I think uh, I think Biden's reaction was just like completely from his heart. No, he wasn't thinking. <laughs> Let's face it, sometimes he gets a little, you know, honey, I get a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> Biden just starts, but here's the other thing. When Biden's son died, I think he's like, Brock is my son now. Yeah. They, Brock is the son I always wanted. Because they just feel like their families are completely connected now. I know. I love uh, his wife way more than anybody else, Jill. Jill. Yeah. She's like a doctor. And... But something that was really adorable about her. And I love that that Michelle and Biden are best buds too. Like they like they have their own hangout. Yeah, they have their own time together. They're gone in a week. You're never gonna see one of them people again. What? Yeah, they're gone. Mm. The last thing you want to do is see an ex president. I mean it's like seeing an ex girlfriend. Unless they're painting. It's always awkward. <laughs> like uh oh. Uh, uh, I have a new here? Hey, uh <laughs> Brock, you look great. He um, looks so good. Um, hope you good lost some weight. You dyed your hair now. <laughs> you dyed your hair black now. <laughs> oh, you're driving yourself around. Yeah, you done that in years. He's like, uh, I heard you have a new president. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's okay. Well, I'm happy for you. Yeah. You know, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know? when, you, when you, like, just played on everything. Oh, my life isn't so great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just looks that way from the yeah, outside. Does, I mean. <clears throat> yeah. I'm as fucked up as you are in my own then you're like, better way. Oh, I barely even see Trump. I don't even... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, almost yeah. forgot he's about real, him. I mean, he's a good guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't have the same sexual chemistry. I did hear someone's going to sing at the inaugural, though, the great Paul Anka. 75 years young, is supposedly going to come in and sing my way. Wow. And it's now, a... the end is near. What? What the fuck is that what supposed happened? to be? The end is near. And now you face the <laughs> final curtain. Hmm? Didn't we have Paul Anka on this show one time? Yes, we did. For his Christmas album. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Paul Anka was, well, he was famous for a lot of songs, but he wrote the old Tonight Show theme, and he used to get paid on that every oh, single Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, every single night. Well, maybe he'll do that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the inauguration. It would be really cool. <laughs> uh, well, I'm looking forward to going to the stand for an unmask with Nick DiPaolo. And uh, that's February 8th, Chris. Yes, 8 February. o'clock at night. Yes. Go to the iBang, theibang.com for your chance to get tickets it's gonna be a great night and go today you don't want this to sell out oh it's going to sell out very very quickly don't fuck up guys make don't it happen this. this is going to be the social event of the uh of the winter we're all wearing white everybody yeah. from the yeah. show is wearing white like oh. angels <laughs> and we're gonna make i need you to put on a jacket <laughs> <laughs> i put on a jacket Canada. anyway flat chat <laughs> yeah. i forgot i assume that that's what that means Chris writes the term map porn at least twice a week now. <laughs> There's just so much data in map porn out there. People just love making maps and telling us things about the United States. Do you know States. that you just said nat porn? Oh, my God. <laughs> map porn. Yeah. Map porn. Well, what do you got now? So this is, uh, they, they found the female, the states with the most female to male ratio by state. Okay. All right. So this is. This is the state. This is the states with the most women. Uh, of All right, if I had to guess, I'm going to say one of the retirement states. Because the women live longer than men. So I'm going to go with a Florida or, you know, where else they uh, retire? Arizona? Arizona people retire, yeah. So what's the answer? The answer, the, the, the highest uh, 
Oh, is it Florida or Arizona? No, it is not. All right, so let's move on. Is it in? Is it a southern state? Yes. Uh, Georgia. No. I'm going to think because no. of the amount of murdered uh, husbands, Mississippi. Mississippi, hold on, is not it? No. Mm. Louisiana. No, you're close. Mississippi is close to Louisiana. <laughs> you're all close. You're all. You're all. You're circling around it. Bama. Bama. Well, first of all, Mississippi is closer to Bama than Louisiana. You got to drive through Mississippi yeah. to get to Louisiana. Yeah. Why'd you give her the close? Yeah. I was giving both you guys close. You're both close. Mm. We were moving further away. <laughs> so it sounds like the ladies like the heat. They like it steamy. I don't know if I even believe Winter it. Winter so is a man's game. What's the percentages? Uh, they don't have the exact percentages. It's just no, the color. And this isn't map porn. This is a made up stupid thing. This is a tease. Yeah. <laughs> map tease. I have Matt Blue Balls right well, now, guys. It's got to be Alaska is the least, right? Yeah, Alaska and, uh, the North, Dakotas? and North Dakota. Yeah. North Dakota. This seem like very man states. Well, where they where do their man business. Single men are going to live doing <laughs> yeah. stuff like if you're some kind of king crab fisherman, what yeah, do you do? Go your wife? You're just cowboying up in South Dakota. And then Wyoming and um, Montana also. Very, a lot of dudes. Yeah. Brokeback style. You know, we haven't let Vito ask one of his stupid questions in a while. Yeah, I miss that. I miss Vito. So, if you guys had to make a choice between these two options, would you rather always be uncomfortably full or always need something to eat? So, this is the way you live all the time. (laughs) You're either either starving or uncomfortably (laughs) food. There's a split second where he's satisfied, yeah. but he blows right past that. <laughs> so, like, would you rather be at that place where you're like, I am so full, I don't even want to move right now? Or would you rather be at that place where you're like, man, my stomach is crumbling and... Uh, have- but here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> I hate both those feelings. <laughs> the extreme. You know what I mean? That would be like saying, would you rather be extremely uncomfortably cold or extremely uncomfortably hot? They're both bad. Yeah, so what's the lesser of two evils? One of yours is just like living with a person with like gas problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people that have... Uh, Which is painful. Bacteria in their guts. You ever hear those people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're just like... You got it? I, f- I mean, I have terrible gas. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you put that on your tender profile? <laughs> you should include that. It's only right. <laughs> I have an All extreme right. stream amount of gas. All right. I'm going to give my answer, even though I think both are horrible... <laughs> Horrible existence. Yeah. I'm going to go with uncomfortably full. And here's why. Right. One, I feel fucking crazy when I'm hungry. And I don't work mentally. So if I'm feeling that, like, hunger pangs forever, I'll commit suicide. <laughs> like, straight up. <laughs> Whereas the other way, I think, like, I'll have a bad life, but I'll live it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope I can still eat, though. <laughs> Even though I'm uncomfortably full. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can like still- in the morning, am I still going to want breakfast or no? You're still going to eat, but you're going to be, it's going to be a struggle. Like you're, every bite, you're going to be like, Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that sounds like suicide, too. And then every time you eat, if you go the other way, you're just going to keep eating and be like, I am still hungry. This is no matter how much you eat, no matter how much you eat. But I, I like my that. personality, <laughs> but my personality <laughs> would completely change if I was constantly hungry. But here's the- I am a fucking asshole when I'm hungry. Right. But here's the thing when he's saying, like, you're not even going to be satisfied no matter how much you eat. like you could sit down. And eat a pillowcase full of fucking food. Yeah. And yet you're still going to be starving. But it's still going to taste good, though. Like, no, when you're overly full, it's like... Uh, not when you're starving. The you're taste just doesn't like, matter. Because huh? you're just constantly eating. The taste is no effect. You're just constantly wanting to put food in your stomach. Right, let's let Jen do this. Um, I'd rather be full. Like, uncomfortably full. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 The ladies want to be full. <laughs> I can't be hungry. I lose my what are you going for? <laughs> I'm going for hungry. I'm going to be hungry all the time. I'm constantly eating. If it seems like it could be fine, fun, just always just eating all the time. No, it's the exact no, opposite. No, it's horrible. Of fun. That's I don't even enjoy like, when it, I'm starving. Like I haven't eaten for a very long time, and now I that's not a meal I enjoy. And I feel crazy. Thing. What could be worse that you eat three sandwiches, but it doesn't help you? You're just as hungry as when you started. Yeah, you're. 
eating doesn't satisfy you anymore. Because you, the hungry person is going is going to have a bit of a weight problem. Uh, but with with both these things, yeah, you probably a uh, bloaty boy <laughs> is the one who's thin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, good point. Because you're not going to want to eat, right? Because I always feel it. Uh. <laughs> All right. I hate food. <laughs> I know people. I worked for a guy, right? That he was a thin dude and he had to keep eating all the time, like, and he couldn't. And there would always be like a little apple on his desk that he'd been just kind of gnawing at. <laughs> and you could just see that he was just forcing little pieces of thing. Oh my God. And then we would say, all right, let's all go out to dinner. We would eat like monsters, obviously. And he'd be like, is there a fish? You know what I mean? <laughs> Is there a fish here? I just can't, you know. I'm watching myself. Watching yourself. You're 96 fucking pounds. <laughs> Might eat like us. Maybe you'll feel better. <laughs> it's a way on. I was it. Oh, my God. You, now your stomach's gross. It's <laughs> so gross with that, dude. I don't know what... It's every fucking day now. I, it didn't used to be that way. I got to eat in the morning. I was just I had a fucking late night. I gotta get oh, shit God. That's too much information. Um, here's our sweet <laughs> friend, Lori and Yonkers. Lori. Hi. Um, so I'm very pregnant right now, Hi, and Lori. I can't eat anymore because my stomach is too squished. This is just in the past couple days. Like, what you guys are talking about is exactly my past, like, 72 hours. I can't eat more than a few ounces at a time, and it's killing me. Oh my gosh. But are you, are you still so hungry? So I would like to be hungry all the time and be able to eat rather than constantly having this fullness. This is this is no good. All right, let me just recommend this to you. Finger sandwiches. Just have a have nice thought about finger, finger sandwich. sandwiches. Um, yeah, that's about where I'm at. Like for breakfast I had like an inch of a baguette and an egg and two ounces of applesauce. Now for like, breakfast today I just had That was it. I had forty <laughs> cheese and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know. Well, I'm used to making like trucker breakfast, like half a box of frozen waffles and a couple of eggs and a couple of breakfast sausages and coffee and, you know, oh. all of it. And I can't eat any more. Oh. Now, so, how, how soon before you have the baby? Um, it might be tomorrow. It might be next week. Who knows? Oh, yeah. The end there is always terrible. It's, you know, it's fine. I'm like in perfect health, babies in perfect health. Everybody's, you know. That's good. Everybody's good. Well, you say that, but my knee's but killing me. But I really me. like eating, and I can't. <laughs> yeah, but you'll be eating again soon with a baby screaming in your face. The thing that always exactly. like exactly. freaks me out is I think about sleeping. Like, how uncomfortable must it be to sleep at night? You can't, there's like one position you can be in when you're that pregnant. It's so uncomfortable. Here's the thing. Well, I can either sleep on my left side or my right side. Oh, <laughs> oh God. But I remember when, when your mother was pregnant, I used to stand behind her all the time and just hold her stomach up from there so she wouldn't Aww. have to do it. And we'd just sit there and we'd watch TV and I would just hold uh, this obnoxious <laughs> little girl. <laughs> Seriously. And then this is what I would feel all the time. Just yeah. the foot pushing through her. Yeah. You would just watch her stomach go. Cause, and now to this day, if Gail always tries to put her foot underneath you. Yeah. I dig my feet under things. And my mom claims that, that I was doing that in the womb. And I would stick my foot between, like try to wedge between her ribs and work oh, my yeah, little foot yeah. between. Uh huh. That's, that's and to this day, that's it, like it's, it's my between most between my ribs state. and my stomach right now. Yeah. So she's like head down, ready to go. Her feet are like in my stomach. <laughs> oh God! So glad men don't have babies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No. If honestly, if I had to like look after someone who was pregnant, who was male, like I don't know if I'd be able to take it. Like it's probably better this way. Well, I know. But, I would have uh, gotten the just, knife and cut know. the baby out of me. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> All right, darling. We're okay, thinking about you. I'm not that one. Catch you later. Bye. 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 Oh, sweet. All right, I got this. It's, I'm late getting to it by 15 minutes. It says, on delay. You've moved on to Friday the 13th and Chris dating. And pad data on the computer still says Aussie reporters uh, f- fight over white. And that sounds racial. I got somebody watching over you all the time. Hmm. A retired broadcaster who no longer wishes to have a, a public life, 
But I will tell you from conversations, yeah. he's dismayed how poorly the production of the show is. Vito, what would you like to say out loud? Well, right now it says choose always hungry or always full. So I know right now it does. But what would you like to say to uh, a broadcaster who's appalled? I, I, I have nothing to say to him. I hope he can let me get better. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> <have to. laughs> What's that mean? I hope he can let me get better. Maybe um, he should get his contact and then he can contact him directly. No, I'd rather hear through me. That way <laughs> it's the cover-up ends. <laughs> Chris, what would you like to say? i like to apologize to really? this man living in the private life. <laughs> that, to the man <laughs> that is so weird. Say, or woman. It's very classy. I'm a class or act. Or You're right. Man, man or, or woman. Because no one knows who it is. Private human. <laughs> I would like to apologize. <laughs> what are you having, Pop Tart? Mm hmm. It's disgusting. <laughs> I've never eaten a Pop Tart. I love them. I ate a couple. I don't see what the big deal is. What do you mean, what the big deal is? <laughs> you see me over here losing my fucking mind? I'm just eating a Pop Tart. <laughs> and I don't know why. Jesus, I, this is good. I don't know why it's such a popular product. <laughs> I think they blow. And like, I had like the brown sugar one. That's what everyone says. The brown sugar is supposed to be the shit. It's not. God, it's supposed to heat him up too. That seems fucking insane. Just relax, All right. dude. It's a fucking dude. Fucking you've known snack. these existed for a while. Why? Why now? Are you coming down? Uh, the Bruce Springsteen cover band taking a lot of heat over the inaugural party from Bruce's fans and stuff like that. They're going to play the Jersey party. Is this a big deal, or are they just a band taking a gig? No, no one gives a shit, really. What takes place in the Jersey inaugural party? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if that's what they want to do, everybody deserves entertainment. <laughs> it's the cover band. If it was Bruce, that'd be crazy. But it's the cover band. They're just taking a gig. Yet, w the whole thing is you're going to act like Bruce, right? Yeah. So Bruce they, wouldn't do the gig. Right. How are you a tribute band if you're not playing tribute to the artist? Hmm. That's the thing. It goes to show tribute. Schmipperut. <laughs> you don't you know, never think saw. like Bruce. <laughs> and the guy who runs this. By the way. And I think you should li live your life like Bruce. Well, that's your, what he's doing every moment of his life, right? And he goes like this. First of all, and his name is Will Forte, which is fucking crazy. That's great. He should be doing a Will Forte <laughs> cover band. Um, and, by, and also, Jersey is just the fucking center of tribute bands. Why do I they love them so much? I think Jersey has more tribute bands than every other state put together. There's a lot in, in Southern California, it. too. Um, but all those are like Van Halen and Poison tribute bands. But, see, here's the thing. He says, look, I wouldn't want to do anything to let down Bruce. He says, without Bruce, none of this is possible. No shit. None of it's possible. <laughs> you're you're yeah. calling your band the B Street Band. It's awful. <laughs> and they're now acting like that's the number one thing. But I always heard Backstreets was the number one Springsteen <laughs> tribute band. At least if I'm going to go by ads I've seen in the newspaper. I've only ever seen, like, I only God's like one tribute band ever. It was a Grateful Dead one. It's called Dark Star Orchestra. Apparently, they're the hot shit. They're very, very big. Yeah. They're like they're very popular. Um, they killed it, too. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a tribute band. You've never but... been to the Jersey Shore, then. <laughs> the Jersey Shore is packed full of tribute bands. I think I did see 2U at an event, though, actually. 2U is, I think, is better than Brother Joe's Journey Band. <laughs> I think they're called Don't Stop or something. I don't know what it is. I think that is maybe my only experience. It's like if you got to see your favorite band with only 18 people there. Yeah, really close. Yeah, too close, actually. <laughs> it's like if you could buy a, a beer for the edge, you know? Um, but this thing, if you're doing the tribute show, right? Yeah. How can you do something that the guy... Who wouldn't, you know? <clears throat> like, if you were doing um, a Moby tribute. Yeah. 
You're going to be sitting there eating a steak sandwich from, <laughs> on stage? <laughs> for me, for the meat lovers who are fans of Moby. Or if you're going to be doing the Stones tribute band and you're Keith, you can't turn down drugs when somebody <laughs> asks you to do it. You have to do You got to do the drugs. All of them, too. Well, Jersey is just up in arms over this one way or the other. The guy, Will Forte from uh, B Street Band, he says he hasn't been able to sleep at night. That's really He sad. says it's just racking his conscience and he doesn't know what to do. He's being, he says, on one hand, I don't want to let down Bruce and the fans. On the other hand, it's $375. <laughs> I had no idea. He needs it. I wonder what is like... The smallest, like the least famous band that someone's done a tribute to. You know what I mean? Like like could, a one-hit wonder tribute band? Okay, you could go in that direction. Just somebody that didn't have a huge amount of success, and yet there is a tribute thing. Or it would be just great, like somebody's like local band, and then they get a tribute band. Or a tribute band to a tribute band. Like, I'm right. doing a B Street tribute. Called C Street. I don't know if there is one in Ashbury Park. We'll have to check with Dave. He knows. We could put on a, a, a tribute comedy show where we just get a guy who looks like Richard Pryor and acts like I'm a guy. Yeah. Who, there is a George Carlin guy out there who goes around and does corporate gigs. Really? Yeah. And they say he makes a good amount of money. Because remember we did something... Where they showed him selling a product or something? Yeah, I think we saw him at, like, he was doing a, here he goes, George Carlin impersonator. What you doing? What's up? What's new? What's going on? What do you think? What do you hear? What do you say? What do you feel? Get past her! What's going down? What it is? How's it hanging? Semantic! He's like, well, well, and I gotta tell you, now that I'm gone, <laughs> I realize the true meaning of life, the whole purpose of life, and that is trying to find a place for your data. Oh, yeah, so he's That's at a software else. company. So instead of a place for my stuff, place for my data. <laughs> Data, you would need a house. You just walk around all the time. That's all your house is. It's a pile of data with a cover on it. Stop you see it. that when you take off an airplane? You look strange. I mean, here's the thing. How do you continue to work for this company? <laughs> Will they force know. you to sit through something like this? I don't know. You would just look <laughs> in the corner and just see one person ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> I would have a, I would hang myself, and I would have a sign wrapped around my neck that just said, "It's because of my job." <laughs> and everybody could be like, "It was that place for your data, man. That's it, man. A place for your data, right? It's like everybody wants to do good work. Right? You want to work as a team. See what I'm doing, man." He's Holy just... shit. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm talking about sick days, you know? <laughs> if you're sick, go ahead and take it. If not, call into your supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> now I was you... just thinking about the one guy in the corporate event. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even go back to the hotel. No. <laughs> Just hug himself <laughs> in the corner of the auditorium. He fashioned a noose. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd that dude hang himself, man? It's weird. A place for your data. I mean, seriously, how shallow is your soul that you could take one of the most anti-corporate comedians of all time and say, I'm just going to do corporate events using his personality. <laughs> it's, so it's horrifying. <laughs> and then they bring a um, 
prior in? Black folks know about dating. <laughs> <laughs> Just selling out his entire life. All right. Uh, we got our comic stuff in the next, right, Chris? Yes, Jim Florentine and Robbie Slovic. One of them, or Mitchell Walters, is the winner of Highlander this year. So we'll break back Bennington. It's the Bennington Show. Now, Chris Stanley, I don't think that we've had such a competitive year as we did this year. Never. Never. It goes 16 weeks. 16 weeks. Most years it goes, what, like seven, eight weeks, yeah. nine weeks? Last last season was so short. Like five weeks last year. Yeah. So we had three finalists. Three finalists. Robbie Slovic, Mitchell Walters, and Jim Florentine. And all of them lost in that last week. Uh, Jim and Robbie had the Chargers. Mitchell had the Titans. We've got uh, Jim and Robbie here now. Mitchell is going to be online with us. Crazy year with you guys. Crazy year. By like week 10, I was like, I'm not going to lose a week, and I'm hoping the other guys lose one. Right. Uh, to, to me, it seemed easy this year for some reason. I've got knocked out the last three years early by yeah. week three. We almost got, everyone almost got knocked out with the Dolphins and Browns. Yeah. Like week three. That's right. what a lot of people got knocked I took the Dolphins on that. Lucky they won that one. But it got to the point where I'm like, this is easy. Or, okay, it's going to end in a three way tie. And that uh, Chargers. Going into Cleveland with Cleveland 0 and 14 or 0 should have been that was a lock. Yeah, I'm like, all right, they're gonna the Chargers suck, but they'll keep it close, and then they'll win with a field goal at the end, and the, of course the Browns are the, you know the Browns, and I'm like, this is a lock to charge. I'm definitely taking, and I guess Robbie, you took the Chargers too. Yeah, I did too. I mean, this was a this was an easier year because there were three garbage teams and yeah. the Rams, the Niners, and the Browns. So basically, whoever was playing the Browns every week, if that was available. That was a lock like, yeah. until week 16. That was my uh, my way of always playing, too. A lot of people try to take the best team, but I was always looking for that worst team out there. Somebody that just couldn't get their goddamn dicks out of the dirt. <laughs> and this year, you know, what the Browns did was almost historic. You know, it went down to the game that knocked you guys out, where they finally woke up. Uh, but... The Chargers, because of that loss, they're moving to L.A. Pretty much, yeah. They're, now <laughs> they're like, we go. can no longer stay in San Diego. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And next year they're going to be playing at, a, I think, 27,000-seat soccer stadium for the next two years. Yeah, like at Carson. Yeah. Which they probably won't even fill. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Seriously, nobody in L.A. likes the Chargers. Yeah. They don't like them at all. They've always they don't even them. like the Rams. They don't like the Rams. The Rams yeah. only had a half. That stadium yeah. was half full. And now San Diego hates them, so they're not going to make the drive to go up. San Diego, There's no way San Diego's going to wait. You know, to go from San Diego to Carson is probably gonna, on a Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. It's going to be a, a four-hour trip. Well, the thing is, is like San Diego... And I feel bad because those people always showed up for games. They did always show up for games. But it's not really a big league town. You know, they have the two teams. I think you've got to have four sports to be a big league city. I don't respect people that don't have all four <laughs> sports. I, don't, I think you either get all four yeah. or you get nothing. Sorry, Tampa. But we're going to yank you unless you get a goddamn basketball team soon. We, I'm, I'm from Tampa. I'm, Tampa's my hometown. We should yeah. steal the magic. I've been saying that forever. Orlando. What, what does Orlando need a basketball team for? They got Disney World. You're going to end up losing your baseball team. I, it's, I know. It's, that's horrifying to me. Yeah. I think they might even go back to, uh, they might go to Montreal, which would be weird because then Montreal would be an American League team. How would that work out, Vito? I think what they would do is they would split because right now it's, uh, it's uneven yeah. or deep, so they would go... To wherever the um, the Brewers, wherever they move, or not the Brewers, the Astro, the Astros moved. <sighs> See, I can't. The Astros are in the uh, uh, AL West right now, so yeah. so then they would go to the NL. Yeah, well, if they go to Montreal, that was always an NL East team, um, and the guys always just like to travel there because of the chicks. Like when I knew guys on the Phils, they would say. We never let our wives come to Montreal with us. <laughs> they go, you know, if you want to make a Chicago trip, that's up to you, honey. You can come along. But you're not fucking going to Montreal. You need to focus there. <laughs> it's not a country. All right. So there's a tiebreaker that's set up uh, with you guys. So we have no idea. At least I have no idea which one of you has won. But we've got Mitchell Walters on the line right now. Mitchell, how are you, buddy? Good morning, boys. How are you? Good. Um, Mitchell. Um, hello, Jimmy. 
What's did, going on, Mitchell? How did you end up with the Titans at the end? Uh, I panicked. I suppose to say. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. Now, I, yeah, I saw this, that Mitchell, I think in July in Vegas, is going to be part of the Outlaws reunion. This is Sam Kinison's crew. Mitchell was part of that. And you guys are all getting together for uh, a show. A July. week of the Tropicana, yeah, me, Alan, and Carl. Who put this together? Uh, Alan did, with Harry Basil. But, uh, Harry runs the room out there, and um, he's going to be great 25 years later. And we might end with some videos and, uh, and play wild thing on stage. Anything can happen. Yeah, I'm shocked you guys have put this off for years and years and years. Yeah, um, we've been waiting until... Yeah. Uh, for 25 years, it always sounds better. Yeah, I guess it does. Mitchell's job was always Sam packages here. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, if there's ever crazy fucking stories, you got to talk to Mitchell about the, the Sam years. They're insane. Yeah, he, I, the Sam years. I've, yeah. I've worked with Mitchell over the years. He's told me some stories. Yeah. And he's still living it. You know, that's the weird thing. <laughs> Nothing has changed in, in, in Mitchell's life. Mitchell, Mitchell. That's right. Yeah. It was great. Mitchell used to, um, there was a club down in Fort Lauderdale, a comic strip. Uh-huh. So, Mitch, I guess, Mitch, maybe you were living down there at the time, or you spend yeah, a lot of time yeah. down there? Yeah, yeah so, I was down there. so the dog track was like, you know, 20 miles away or 15 miles away. So, Mitchell wouldn't even be on the shows like the regular shows. There was a show every week. Mitchell would just come in and do a guest spot, just a seven minute guest spot, and just so he could sell t shirts after the show, because he would do the whole thing about the cars. <laughs> right. With the license plate. Yeah. Poor old Negro thinks it's a Cadillac. Yeah, he's only yeah, he 18, <laughs> and he had T-shirts, so he would just do a seven-minute guest spot and so, just so he could sell T-shirts afterwards yeah. and take that T-shirt money and go to the dog track. So he'd sell like seven or eight. He'd go, all right, good, I got 80 bucks. I'm going to the dog track. Every night he'd be in there doing a guest set. It was so great. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and then what would you do, hang around next to the door, Mitchell? Yeah, of course. I would wait till people left, and I hawked them. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> every everything must go. No bag, no tax. Yep. You know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Have you ever paid a tax in your life? <laughs> Actually, no. I'm having problems with Social Security now that I turned sixty-five. Right. Because you it never put a, a dime into it. <laughs> I, you haven't no, existed for 45 years. <laughs> I didn't know how it worked, and I stopped, apparently, like in 94, I stopped. Basically. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, had, I had it right off me. I'm going to get back to you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> All right, now, how does the tiebreaker work? Okay, so this is the tiebreaker. Yeah. We take everyone's picks. Yeah. We take the scores of each game. And subtract the winning score from the from the losing score. Take that number, add them all up, and then the one person with the most points that way is the winner. Does anyone understand this no. tiebreaker? This is the no. SPL so, tiebreaker. Yeah. So this is basically who has lost the least by the the smallest margin. Is what yeah, exactly. So say if you pick more blowouts, that means you'd be in a better position because there's a bigger difference in the scores. Okay, so the the amount of points that you won by yeah mm -hmm. all year added up together minus what they each lost by in the last game yes now who's it's all basically it's, it's the pythagorean theory <laughs> <laughs> what kind of theory <laughs> it's the pythagorean theory yeah <laughs> okay mitchell by the way knows a lot about numbers <laughs> that's his thing oh, by the way i just i just want to wish stanley and penny a safe trip back they're listening now ronnie from miami back to brooklyn okay thank you for that mitchell and what do they owe you for that? Make sure that they know. Yeah. All right. That's beautiful. So we don't know, uh, but we've had some people check it, right? Yes. Multiple people have done the math. Okay. And you feel strongly about this? I feel positive, good, 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 good about this. Now, uh, each of you guys were looking for the Joe Montana ball. And if Joe Montana is killed this week, um, it's really helpful to you guys because now you got, you know, no one else is going to get those signed balls. No, no. It's over. Uh, in the meantime, J Joe can't seem to get himself a gig on TV. I don't understand it. <laughs> Maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. He can't do color commentary. Did he he did it? He did, yeah, he did it when he first retired, but he just yeah. wasn't good on TV. Not a big personality. Yeah. 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 He if he keeps wearing sketches, he'll get no work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. Go to uh, shoes. Put some shoes on, and you'd be on TV. Get the sketches. So you're saying hard shoes is what's keeping him. Hard shoes is the answer. That's right. Look yeah. business like. All right. So 
Uh, now, I don't know whether you guys know this, but Robbie's chick won last year. So yeah, that's why I have to win this year. <laughs> yeah, it's very embarrassing. Oh, I don't like this instead of. <laughs> <laughs> did she play this year? Yeah, yeah, she okay. did. Now you were you'll probably give the ball to your kid if you win, right? Just hand it over to your son. Either that or eBay. Okay, <laughs> and I know. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably yeah. give it to him. I know, Mitchell. You're going straight Craigslist. There's no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm putting I'm putting it in my friend Stanley's. He has a he has a uh, enclosed. Gorgeous piece of furniture with a lot of Beetle memorabilia. <laughs> so just go right in there. Nice. With the Beetle memorabilia. Or if I lose the Super Bowl, it'll be on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell, you know how a lot of people are up and down with their gambling? Uh, Mitchell's is down and then further down. That's uh-huh. his two <laughs> amounts of gambling. All right, so we've got it all worked out. Yes. All right, go ahead. Chris. Right, so this is this will announce the okay. The 2016 Highlander. There can be only one football challenge presented by the Bennington Show and the Interrobank.com began over five months ago with 70 stand-up comedians. And in the end, it came down to three modern day football savants. Robbie Slovic. Yeah, no, I'm I'm real into it, and I I have to win because last year's winner, Casey Boston, was my girlfriend. Jim Florentine. He came over on Sunday and watched football with my friends that I've been friends with since first grade. And he walked out of my basement. He goes, "Man, now I know why you are the way you are." <laughs> when I see who you hang out with, he's like, "Holy right. shit!" And Mitchell Walters. I am the pursuer. I pursue until the credit limit is extinct. <laughs> When the bankroll is empty, I move on. I get up. Only one comedian can win the signed Joe Montana football, thanks to the good people at Steiner Sports. Only one comedian can live forever in infamy. There can be only one. Your 2016 Highlander Comedian Football Challenge winner is... Robbie Slovic. Oh, what a moment. Oh, what a moment. Oh, oh, my oh, yeah. oh, my God. This is big. Freak yes. Down. Somebody's Freak getting down. laid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! This is a big moment. This is a very big moment for me. I needed this. I, I needed actually, this. I actually uh, forgot. I got bored and started daydreaming, and then uh, I didn't even think of it by the end. Now, Chris, how did it work out points wise? All right, points wise, in third place, Jim Florentine with 170 points. In second place, Mitchell Walters with 181. And Robbie Slovic in first with 212. Oh, that's dominant. Points. That's a dominant win. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, you picked a lot of blowouts. That's a dominant win for me. I'm wor- they're going to be like a campaign where Martin Sheen is going to tell people that I'm actually not the winner. <laughs> yeah, it's in Florentine it's the whole really time. Does feel like an electoral college <laughs> yeah. thing. So the blowouts help them, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay, so if you pick the like the Jets and the Titans early on, and you pick the Jets and the Jets blow out the Titans, that yeah. helps you exactly. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Mitchell? Uh, I, I got to take some medication. I'm really <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> what kind of pills you I got today, have, Mitchell? If you went to Oakland, it would have been all me. Nobody else would have been on the air today. <laughs> 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 Mitchell. Mitchell is now the person. I have to show yeah. up for that outlaw dude. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell's the person that said never take 50s at a track. I never knew that bit before. Yeah, but you never want to take a fifty set of track. It's bad luck. Grants are not good. You don't yeah. want those. You want a, you want a fucking Chris Pondo. Then he also right, said you know that what? you could always Wait, choke on peanuts. <laughs> if if you're having a bad day, just fucking keep eating peanuts until you choke. <laughs> That's right, Ronnie. You remember that? I never. I'm, I'm never going to forget any of the great knowledge that you've given me over the years. <laughs> Yeah. Well, congratulations, Robbie. By the way, yeah, I appreciate that. I can I can send the ball directly to the IRS on your behalf <laughs> in your name. The oh, IRS Ronnie. has no record of him. <laughs> happy belated birthday, by the way. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mitchell. Happy belated birthday, New Year's Eve. I'm yes, guys were on the air. I couldn't call in. I know you couldn't, but I appreciate the thoughtfulness. All right, Mitchell, we'll let you go, buddy. 
Yeah, I'm really depressed right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, just think you'll be losing it to track later today, and that'll be on your mind. No, tomorrow. 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 <laughs> okay. Lock it down. Good luck, guys. Thank All right, you. Bye, man. Sure. Kinnison used to scream at Mitchell, make up your mind. Do you want to be a drug addict or a gambling addict? you got to pick one. <laughs> you can't have both of them. <laughs> Uh, so, Robbie, very you and your chick go back to back, back to back championships. So what yeah. was the prize last year? Uh, some, signed helmet gr- or uh, Gronk, Gronk, Gronk ball. Gronk ball. Oh yeah, it was Gronk Island yeah. ball. The year before that was the signed helmet, which Joe List gave to charity, and then no one has done that since. Yeah. <laughs> Joe List. But I will do that right now. You know, uh, you don't have to do that. That's what I'm going to do. You're well, going to give it to charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have one you like? Or do I have to find it the sick kids thing or dying You know kids what? Or... Yeah, I mean, you can do it any way you want, but there is a... Um, I talked to a guy who just uh, wanted another charity thing to come in here. Oh, it's a shady really? start. I talked yeah. to a guy. Is a bad... <laughs> I, know, I know a, a guy, guy. It was a guy at the stand last night. He goes, I just spent 1500 to come in to see your show. I go, why didn't you just fucking give me the 1500 <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he says it's going for sick kids. <laughs> I don't know, there's something wrong with some kids out there. Yeah. Every kid I see looks okay. (laughs) Yeah. I don't see a problem with them. I know. I see a lot of really unbelievably (laughs) healthy kids. You know what? You're right. I'm going to keep the ball. Fuck these kids. Keep the ball. Keep the ball. Then then you can give it to sick kids any time you want. Uh, There's a charity I like called Peace Players International. It'll it'll go to them and they'll figure out how to turn into money. Uh, They go into conflict zones like Israel, Palestine, uh, places like uh, South Africa, like former apartheid places, and get kids to play sports with each other. Uh, to build bridges or whatever, you know, you get it. So you, you, you the Jews against the Palestinians, <laughs> basically. Wow. Yeah. That's an exciting yeah. game. football game. Yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to go to that game. <laughs> There'll be a Jesus. lot of personal fouls. Yeah. <laughs> this is worse than Chai Sun Valley. It's very, very personal during this game. So are you, you? You feel good about the math breakdown, right? Hundred percent. Yes. Hundred percent. The math is good. It was it was checked and rechecked and rechecked. Yeah, this is the Robbie Slovic is the official. You got to remember, this is going to kids playing uh, like Jews against Palestinians. It's important. I saw that uh, Olympics where the Arab kid would even compete against a Jew. He said, "Just because I'm not going to walk out there and have any." What was it? Judo. It was judo. Oddly yeah. enough. And then the like Vikings are the, perfect the Vikings are the same way with the Packers. They're like, I'm not going <laughs> to. I, I refuse. <laughs> We're different kind of white people than those white people. <laughs> right, what are the games this weekend? So let's, All right, let's also run a pick. It's Seahawks at Falcons. I'm going to pick Falcons in that. Who's who's the favorite? It's Falcons minus five. So the Wow, I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. The Seahawks aren't great on the road. They're playing in a dome. If it's in Seattle, they're probably it's the line's probably even on that. Right. No, they're playing in uh, yeah in Atlanta. In Atlanta. So um, I know and, you know they Earl Thomas isn't playing at their safety. Yeah, the guy's an animal, and you know their offense at Atlanta, especially in that dome, is phenomenal. So I could see Atlanta definitely winning that game. All right. Anybody taking the Seahawks? Anybody? I think oh, no. I took Seahawks yesterday when we were talking about that's it. yesterday. Just you know what? Treat today like a new day. That's what I like to do. <laughs> It's the same way you treat your mother. I go, don't act like, you know what I mean? Well, every I day is a new day. yesterday was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yesterday is yesterday. Now we're starting fresh every single day. Oh, what's the next game? Houston at New England, minus 16 and a half. It's been, wow. going, up. It's been going up and down. It's going between, as I've seen as high as minus 20, and I've seen it as low this, as minus 15. This has got to be the highest playoff line in history, right? It has to be, yeah. Because I know, like, three years ago, Broncos, Jacksonville was uh, was minus 16. Everyone lost their mind and saying that was the biggest fucking... Uh, and what happened in that game? Uh, Jacksonville covered. Yeah. I mean, so you give somebody 20 points, 16 points, yeah. you're going to so, cover. I might take that in a two-team teaser because you get an extra six right. on top of that. All but right. even still, three touchdowns. You got Brock Osweiler at quarterback. Right. Who has it? Can't, can't move that offense. Dex- yeah. Texas got a good defense, but... You know the Patriots are going to score. They might hold them for a little bit. Right. So I don't know. But they, you know, then you could get a garbage time touchdown. The Patriots are still winning by fucking 15. Yeah, you know what I mean? Up. They're like, who gives a shit? Oh, all, all the people betting. <laughs> all the degenerate gamblers. Right. Mitchell just lost his fucking sketchers. On this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Sunday games, Pittsburgh at Kansas City. I believe Kansas City is minus one and a half. That's going to be the best game of the weekend, I think. It's going to be a good game. Not nah, a Green Bay Dallas game, I think will be. You think so? Yeah. Who are you picking in that? I don't know. That's a tough one. You got a rookie quarterback going against Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is on fire. It's right. Dallas minus four and a half. That's a lot. really yeah. I'm taking Dallas. I think this is their year. I hope not. I mean, if I if it's Dallas, 
and Trump in the same year. It's a bad year. I'll yeah. fucking hang myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad year. <laughs> but that's why I'm taking Dallas. It was Trump. It's going to be Dallas. I feel like... Yesterday I said the Cowboys. I feel like Aaron Rodgers will fucking throw it You out. turned it around, though. Yeah. In one day. See? Yeah. That's what I say, Gail. Every day's a new day. Mm-hmm. Plus four and a half? Come on. Give me that. But it doesn't matter the day. In I sport- will never pick Dallas. <laughs> no, me neither. Well, if you pick Dallas, you, nobody in your family will ever talk to you again. <laughs> I don't give a shit what it is. I don't care if it's Dallas against ISIS. My entire family would be Yo. cheering. Yeah. Good. When we were little kids, uh, we had a Ouija board, right? And me and my cousins tried to figure out the fucking game. And it was like the Eagles against Dallas. And we had to come in as the Cowboys. My, and like we're like, I don't know, eight or nine. My uncle takes the fucking Ouija board, <laughs> opens up the door in the snow, and whips it. And then I just saw it disappear into a blizzard. <laughs> and I was just like, the, the Ouija board said it, Uncle Ray. Don't be bringing that shit around here. That's devil shit. We had to wait to spring to go out and check in the backyard to find out where it was. No, I was, I was literally told to hate the Cowboys before I even knew the Eagles were our team. Like being like a little baby, just someone said, Cowboys suck to me, you know, <laughs> until I was saying it back, and then they were all happy. I have that my, with my son, because I'm, I'm a Dolphin fan, so we don't like the Jets. Right. So now he, he hates the Jets. My friend, we went over for uh, over his house for breakfast a couple weeks ago, and they had a Jet banner in the backyard. He's like, Dad, I don't want to go back there anymore. I'm like, Why was so mean to you? He goes, no, you see that Jet banner? We can't go back there. Every yeah. time he walks in the store, he goes, oh, the Jets. I'm like, yeah, because they had a good year last year. You don't see that shit up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you've raised them to hate the home team. Yeah, it's in hostile territory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't. He he can like the Giants. He can like the Eagles. Right. You know, just uh, you know, I just told him, look, if you're gonna be a Jet fan, it's gonna be a life of misery. <laughs> pro- I mean, the Dolphins are. No, you are right. Dolphins at least won a couple, even though it was in the seventies. They're gonna be pretty bad too. He could pick. I tell pick any team. Anybody wants to pick the team that I like. I go, but if you're a Jet fan or Jets or usually the Mets, you it's it, you're gonna get your heart broken every year. Vito's a Mets fan, and last year you pretty much came close to cutting your own throat. Yeah, I went into debt with like a bookie I know to go to every playoff game, and then this year went to the one-off game, spent another like two hundred bucks to see them. And I'm a Jets fan, so I don't really have any good sports teams. You were you were at the last Dolphins game, right? I but never made it. See, oh no, you yeah, never did. I was hanging with Artie, Artie Lang, New Year's <laughs> Eve. So I had, I had a six thirty a.m. flight, <laughs> so I didn't make it. <laughs> He's, uh, I'm watching him shape up because he's going on that tour with Apatow. And, like, I'll do stuff like after the, I'll be go, ladies and gentlemen, for the last 20 years, anyone who's ever seen Artie in concert always thinks, hey, was I here for the last Artie Lang show ever? <laughs> and um, <laughs> he's still beating it, still beating the odds. And Artie goes, when I turn 50, a lot of money's going to change hands. <laughs> that was great new year's eve at the stand yeah uh, Artie and ronnie going up there and riffing till, from 20 to 12 till 12 yeah on stage was just amazing to watch yeah it was really fun it was so good it was uh so funny to do that with him because he doesn't normally do that type of thing but Artie is one of those guys that let's suppose that he never went into comedy and just worked as a doc worker all these years, he'd still be just as funny as he is now. You know what I mean? Like, there's guys in baseball that you see just have a natural swing. You know what I mean? That's the way Artie is. <laughs> all the time. Last night, he showed up late to the gig because they were shooting a movie, yeah. and there was nowhere to park. <laughs> so finally, he just hops out of his car and just, like, just yeah, it. tells his friend, find a place. <laughs> but then he comes in, and he's like late, and somebody's on stage, he's like this. What the fuck are they doing? A movie? What the fuck? You know what I mean? And I'm dying. I'm cracking up as he's asking me serious questions. I would never want to see him at a funeral. So you guys just hung out that night? Yeah, we hung out. Yeah. Hung to like three, four in the morning. You know he's supposed to be doing good, right? Yeah, he is. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> It's got a big tour coming up. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> no, I hear, you did you see? Were you the one who saw some of the episodes? I saw his, them all. He's amazing. Yeah, right. You were the one saying he's amazing. Yeah, and, uh, he, and Pete Holmes's new show. Yeah, Pete Holmes's new show is called Crashing, and Artie plays the part of Artie, and he's fucking 
funny as shit. Funny as shit. Just getting in the... And, and it's Artie's stories. What they did is he told them stories, they typed it up, <laughs> and then that's it. No, no jokes need to be written. <laughs> it's real things that happen. Yeah. One of them, Gina Gershon, and she's playing like a local girl in like fucking Albany or something, and she so shows up to see Artie when he's gets out of rehab, and he's clean and sober, and, uh, you know, he doesn't stand a chance. He fucking sees her, sees the bendel, and he's like, fuck it's this. Over. Fuck rehab. I'll go back. Tomorrow, take me to a meeting. Okay. Tonight, I'm doing this. And it's so funny because it's just his personality. Just like when you were talking to Mitchell. His losses fuel his comedy. Right. <laughs> he's got a lifetime for him. The fact that he gets 65 and has never paid in. Is fucking hilarious. <laughs> and you know, Hysterical. you could have known him when he was fucking 35, fuck them, 40, <laughs> fuck them, 50, <laughs> fuck them, 65, where's my money? <laughs> what well, You know, why don't I have a 401k? <laughs> he said he has a problem with the IRS. <laughs> he has a problem with everybody. <laughs> it's amazing how he can get away with that. Like the IRS doesn't track him down at some point. You know, where are they gonna, what are they going to get from him? Yeah, where are they going to find him? Dog track? Can they do a little research and maybe go to his website and see he's playing in, in Virginia Beach? Right. Like send a local IRS agent dates? down there. You know, right? <laughs> Comedians are pretty easy to can find. I, can I fucking tell you? He owes me money, and right. I haven't been able to get it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Florentine and Robbie Sloviger in studio. Jim's special, A Simple Man, is available to purchase on iTunes and on, and on Amazon.com. And Robbie's hosting Stand Up on the Spot at New York Comedy Club at, on Wednesday, January 25th. Go to NewYorkComedyClub.com for tickets and more information. Sweet. That room is really turning around, huh? Oh, it's fantastic. Now. It's, one of, it's become one of my favorite rooms Isn't in the that city. Isn't that great? Yeah. I like that room. I've been yeah. sets there recently, yeah. But I always love the fact that you, you have a, a room that looks like it's dead. They ruined it. And then goes to show you, an owner can come in there, fix it up, turn it around, and boom, you got a hot room again. Although, why can't they make anything happen uptown? You notice that? Like, none of the uptown clubs seem like they know what they're doing right now. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you get a lot of tourists in those in those uptown clubs. Yeah. That, you know, are just there to go, oh, well, I guess we'll do this now. Right, because somebody caught them in fucking Times Square with, yeah. that, with that deal. Because they're great rooms, too. Stand Up New York is a gorgeous room, and Comic yeah. Strip's a great room, too. But, yeah, I don't know what the, like... Comic on. Strip is one of the most iconic yeah. fucking rooms left in the country. That was the, one cl the first club I ever got passed in. in the is York. that right? Yeah. It was a great club. With uh, Lucian being the the guy at yeah. the time? No, I only got passed because I was good at softball. I, I got on the softball team. <laughs> I know I didn't do softball. Seriously, that was the only reason I got passed there. Uh, I would hang out there. He's like, hey, you're from Jersey. You, you know, you're not any good. You don't wear a sports jacket and jeans on stage. <laughs> I had long hair at the time, and I would just hang at the club, and I'd, I'd talk with him. We'd talk baseball and stuff like that, and then he's like, oh, the softball team. I go, I want to go out and try out. He's like, all right. you know. And then you had to work at the club. Right. You couldn't be a ringer. You had to work at the club, or you couldn't be on the team. And like the first game, Eric McMahon was another comic. We both joined at the same time. And he played baseball, too. So the first game, we both won like four for four. <laughs> we beat the reigning champs. They were like two and 13 a year before. They were never good. And that was his, that was his heart and soul, that team. That's yeah. all he cared about. So next thing you know, he's like, oh, my God, these guys are amazing. And he's like, oh, shit, now you got to work at the club. So now I have to see you. So, he had, you know, he had to watch your set and then bring you in his office and critique your set. Because if I didn't work at the club, I couldn't be on the team. So right. I just when I walked in there, I did a set. I walked in the office. I never get. He's just shaking his head. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, ah, I don't like your act. He goes, all your jokes are very sophomoric. He goes, they're kind of jokes where you're in a bunch of guys in a locker room and nudge each other afterwards. He goes, but you know, he goes, your voice needs to be heard in the club. And there's some prom shows coming up. <laughs> and Sixteen year old kids will think your your act is funny. <laughs> so I put you on like three in the morning in front of prom kids and. And then every once in a while, on like Monday night, you'll get the last spot, which is the <laughs> Sam Kinison slash Andrew Dice Clay spot, right. Monday at 1110, in front of like eight people, and then we'll start you there. And that's how I got passed. I think it's so funny, though, that if you if you would have fucking taken the collar the first game, don't even bother doing this. Oh, set. without a doubt. Yeah. He, he would have just like, yeah, you're not <laughs> even... 
coming in. But he, when he saw it when, after that first game, then he's like, all right, I, these guys got to be working my club. I don't want to break any rules. The next thing you know, we're, we're fucking, me and Eric McMahon are working the club. <laughs> so, or, yeah, doing prom shows at 3 in the morning. Is that like the Broadway league you were playing in when, yeah. you, when you played against? Now, were there any kind of Broadway stars playing in that, or are you playing against the crew? Uh, pretty much the crew. Yeah. Uh, a couple of weathermen. Bruce Willis played in the li- league for a little while. He would show up once in a while. Is that right? He was on, I forget which team, because he used to bartend at some place or something like that. Oh, but. yeah. There was a place on the Upper West Side that was like... So it was C. I don't... Yeah, I think you might be right about that, that he used to j- bartend, and they say he would jump on stage and play the harmonica. It's back when there used to be fucking bars in New York that stars would hang out with. It seems like once social media started, like you couldn't afford to be out getting fucking trashed in public if you're a movie star. There's you know? only like two places people like you'll see your hill about stars going to like One Oak and I think some place called Avenue. Both in Meatpacking District, and that's those are just the yeah. Two but clubs. it's one thing to go into a club because you can VIP. But when you're in a bar, oh yeah, you know. Yeah, there's no bars. That's yeah. That's fucking way over. And Milo played in the league. Like he would show up once in a while. I forget right. what he was a good pitcher. Could he play? Too. Yeah, yeah. He was a pitcher. He was really good. And uh, Bruce Willis was married to Demi Moore at the time, and she would come to the games, right, and sit on the bench. So I would play left field, and she'd be like in the park bench over there, and I warming up. You know, in between innings, I'd miss the ball on purpose, so the ball go right next to him. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Thinking I had a shot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting ten dollars for a spot later that night at the comic <laughs> strip. Yeah, I got a shot with Demi Bruce, Moore. I'm leaving you for the rec league. Left fielder. <laughs> His material's a little soft, Mark, but there's, <laughs> there is something there. Um, it, it's almost like there's not that sense of community that there used to be, though. Like that, you know. Like there's something about that kind of a, a of a fun league shit, you know, to to keep everybody connected. But it's some like I'll, I'll go back to that social media. It's almost like people are more distant personally because of social media. You but, know? But yet you're more informed about everything that everyone's right. doing. Right. Everything that doesn't know, like, really happen yeah. though. But I I think it's kind of bad that people just can't go out and get trashed. You know? Now it's everybody's bit where is, what is Steve Harvey doing at Trump's? Oh, yeah, I saw this that meeting that was happening. Is he apologizing for the Asian joke? <laughs> <laughs> we talked to 100 mints. <laughs> Why is Steve Harvey there? I was just like, it just makes an appearance at Trump Town. I don't yeah. even know what. Oh, my goodness. Mm. What am I going to do? It's all happening. <laughs> And, and there you go, the straight social media. We got a president who just fucking tweets out like a fucking mad person, you know? He's not going to stop. No, and by the way, I brought stop. that up, and I remember someone had called in or tweeted in and was just like, all, oh, you're being silly, like, all that's going to stop. Like, it, yeah. No, I don't think it will, and I think we're seeing it now. No. It does give him a chance to bypass the media but they also say trump does it for this reason like if he finds out there's something he doesn't want to talk about he'll start a fucking fight with somebody on twitter (laughs) and immediately that becomes the news cycle so the shit that he doesn't want to talk about doesn't get brought up and they're always like why is he attacking merle streep it's a fucking you know it's a goddamn uh smart marketing I don't think he's a mastermind like that, though. I no? just think he's like, ah, oh, fuck Meryl Streep. And then that's <laughs> it. <you know>? like, <laughs> he's just as mad as Meryl Streep as he is North Korea. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's all I the always, same. There's that New York attitude. I think Howard had it. Joan Rivers had it. Owen A used to have it where, who am we fighting today? Like, what? Yeah. You yeah. know, like, that's what brings out the best in them of who do I got to battle with? And they don't take it as personal as most people do. You know, I watch Anthony's fucking Twitter. He's always got a battle. And then I see him, and it's not like he's pissed off at anybody. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's just a gimmick that he does. It's yeah, just he, a loves, fun thing. he loves fighting with people on Twitter. Yeah. But I, I never see him, like, pissed about it. Like, you see the fucking asshole on Twitter? <laughs> he doesn't even bring it up in real life. I guess it's like if you're playing a video game, you're not really mad at anybody that you're playing a video game is. And if you don't see Twitter as being real, you know, why would you be pissed off about it? I think that's where Trump's head is. It's just something to do. <laughs> and he loves the attention because he knows every tweet that he puts out there is going to make news. 
pretty much. All right. He's had, he's been the number one news story for what, a year and a half, Trump? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long can that go on, though? How long before people are just like, I can't hear about that fucker anymore? You know? Does it ever happen? I don't know. You ever get bored of him? I really think that the media is going to push it to the. I think they're they're going to follow his every move and just reporting on every little thing and, and until, until like everyone goes insane. But if the ratings suck, it's like is there a band? Sometimes you get a band, and you're like, man, I love this fucking music so much, and you're listening every day, every day, and then finally you're like, oh fuck this band, I can't fucking do this anymore. I need at least a couple years off from yeah, them. This fucking I, this band took away my health insurance. <laughs> 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 this man no longer allows me to go get dental checkups. Jim Florentine and Robbie Slovak are in studio. I see him. Jim's special, a Simple Man, is available to purchase on iTunes and, and on Amazon.com. Rob, Robbie's hosting Stand Up on the Spot in New York Comedy Club on Wednesday, January 25th. Go to NewYorkComedyClub.com for tickets and more information. And now these guys are sworn enemies for next year. Yes, it, it's just the facts. It's what it's it just is. The facts. It's what it's got to be. I'm used to. I've won one thing in my life. <laughs> one time, I won at a bachelor party. There was a raffle for a blowjob from one of the dancers, and uh-huh. I won that. And that was the only thing I've ever won. That's a much better prize yeah. than a football. Well, <laughs> hold on, what did, I'll take that. Are you on trade? Let's say, what did he look like? Was he a good looking guy? <laughs> no, but she did. Um, <laughs> this is a funny story. She did actually when we went in the stall in the bathroom. Was it a VFW hall in Jersey? Nice. You know, white trash. <laughs> yeah. And um, when we went in there, she said, okay, you want, she goes, you want, and she, she was probably like 25, 26, yeah. she was cute, and she goes, okay, uh, do you want my teeth in or out? And I go, what do you mean? She goes, oh, she goes, I got in a bad, ax, bad car accident, and I have fake teeth, so you want them in or out when I do this? So I'm like, take them out. <laughs> so she put them right on top, top of the toilet paper holder, <sighs> put them there. As my friends were standing on the toilet watching over, there was like nine heads <laughs> watching over on both sides of the stall watching. Oh That's, well, what was the point of going into the bathroom then? I, well, because we had to go, you know, we couldn't do it right there. I guess it was uh, the VFW. So, have some class. Ron. Members, yeah, were around, like the guys that run the joint that are serving beer, so we couldn't do it right out in the open. I didn't want to do it out in the open. But. That's a question she learned to ask. You know, yeah. the first time she just took them out and someone freaked out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She, she was polite. And I said, yeah, everything. I, I said, take them out. I think you made the right decision. Though. I think so. I, I was, I, I, it really did. It was a split decision. Because you, like, you normally don't get the option. <laughs> You don't. Exactly. Why not go for it? Because at that point, if you get that other, if you get that option where you could take your teeth out, you're like, all right, I'm getting a blowjob from a grandmother. So. Yeah, <laughs> but were you worried for like a split second? Were you like, oh, but what if I love this and I'm going to need to seek this out from here on out? Uh, My thing is, ladies oh. with no teeth. <laughs> no, I was more worried. There, uh, uh, I eight guys giggling above me, <laughs> watching. So <laughs> it was hard to concentrate on anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally as close to gay as you can possibly get, I think. <laughs> Having nine, nine guys watching. I would have been doing the same thing if I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> You're up there with a beer? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about Jim is he lives, he lives a stress-free lifestyle. <laughs> Very simple pleasures. Absolutely. Either you're getting it or you're watching it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all in good fun. Uh, Chris, there are people complaining because you said on... The 29th of December, I'm not on fucking Tinder, Tinder. you were uh, screaming, and then on one three seventeen, four days later, you said, I've gone, gone on my first Tinder date. Well, that's because it was pre-re- that was a pre-record. For, that yeah. was, we recorded before I was on Tinder. So what made you break? What made you become a Tinder guy? <sighs> I don't know, just loneliness, probably. He's been getting laid pretty steady since he started Tinder. He's doing very well for himself. You're in New York? Yeah, New York. You're in the city? In the city. Yeah, see, you, Queens, in a big Manhattan. city like that, you can, there's, there's so many options. I'm out in the suburbs in Jersey, Yeah. and I joined it, and in the beginning, like, all these girls pop up, but then they go away because there's nobody left. It runs out. It runs out real quick. When you're in a city, you got so many options, and then there's other people coming to the city for, like, a week or two on yeah. vacation and might want to meet somebody, oh. a girl on business or whatever like that, so you'll get that, too. In the suburb of New Jersey, you're not getting some girl that's going to stay at the Holiday Inn next to the Applebee's. 
looking for some guy to hook up with for a week. That ain't happening. But in the, so that's why he's he's doing well. He's in a hitter's park. He's like, this, yeah. New York City is like the coarse field for Tinder. We are we are in the steroid era of hooking up. Absolutely. The numbers today yeah. all need an asterisk. I'm in Jersey. I'm in a pitcher's park. You know what I mean? Like like this one city field open that had to move the fences in. You know what I mean? Because no no home. David Wright was hitting nine homers a year. They're like, look, this is ridiculous. So that's where I'm in a pitcher's park. Park out there. <laughs> it's like I, like I saw it. the because I was going through Chris's uh, Tinder and I was like, man, there's like a lot of French girls, there's a lot of Italian girls. Like, what is this? And he's like, oh yeah, they're just visiting. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, the whole world is college. Like, like you just yes, have the ability to just sleep with it. That's insane. Yeah, college has never stopped. I'll tell you, you know that college hasn't stopped because I go into a bagel place. And all the kids are together in their pajamas. And I'm like, you guys don't get fucking dressed to get bagels? And then they'll buy a bagel and a cup of coffee with a fucking Amex card. I'm like, really? You don't have cash on you for a bagel? No Oh, cash. no. They're still in college. They're still living the same way that they did. Yeah. The amount of people that I meet, the, uh, I met all these uh, girls from Georgia. They moved to New York City together. And got an apartment together, and there's like four of them. And they were college dorm mates. People don't end the college experience. That's weird. It stays college. My a good portion of my friends moved to, we all moved to the same neighborhood. I don't live there anymore. Uh -huh. But a, most of them still do. And then they moved from like Greenpoint. Now they all live in Bushwick. And it's like they still live all walking distance. It's like cr college never ended. It's weird. Yeah. They'll be moving to Ridgewood in about six months. Mm -hmm. That's and then eventually, one day, they'll all go to fucking St. Pete together. <laughs> They're like, you know what? There's a nice like place on 34th Street. <laughs> There's a pool and a golf course. And we'll all go down and wait till we die together. It's a good option for us. Yeah. You grew up in Tampa? Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, that's like a whole different world, right? It is a whole different world. Yeah. 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 Florida's weird because you get everyone moves from like... Ohio and New York and right. Boston and they all come down and kind of make everything worse and then you've got your old like southern racists who are already the worst and it's a it's kind of a weird mix. You know what's funny is like those old southern there's a southern boys network that still runs like the government and stuff like that you know and and the legal system but then you don't even meet people who are like that and they're like old school Southern guys, look, things are a little different down here. You're like, I don't know one other guy, <laughs> yeah. except for the guys hanging around here, because their families have been there forever. But you know what else is weird? Is like, on the west side, where Tampa is, people come down from the Midwest, uh -huh. and then on the east coast, it's just people from New York. It's like, whatever highway, you didn't even fucking think, you're just like, what's the straightest highway <laughs> to that part of Florida, and then I'll spend the rest of my life there? Would you ever go back? Uh, I, I don't know if I'd live there, but I do love Tampa. I mean, yeah. I really do like that city a lot. Uh, but if I end up there, it means that, you know, it, my career didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, it's tough. To, there's a lot of, there's a ton of work down there for comics, but yeah. you're basically stuck yeah. down there. You don't even have yeah. to leave the state and you can make a living. You work side splitters. I like started at side splitters. Yeah, side the improv is down great. There. Yeah, yeah, the improv is good. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of white people are moving over to Fort Myers. Right. The, a lot of the, the East Coasters are going down there. They're going yeah. to Boston, New York. They're, they're going to the West Coast of Florida, Sarasota, Fort Myers area. Because Fort Lauderdale's getting a little sketchy and West Palm's too expensive. So they, yeah. they moved to the West Coast. Sarasota was the first part of Florida I ever went to. It was fucking stunning at the time. Like literally white beaches and clear water. I don't know if it's still It's like still a very that. pretty place. But I, I remember when I first got there and uh, it was like me and my friends had driven down in a, in a fucking van and we were speeding the whole way we we're just fucking eating pills and we got there and i was like fuck there's something really different than philadelphia in the world you know what i mean <laughs> we're all like literally why don't we just stay here why don't we just stay what the fuck would we go back for i, I think that happens yeah i moved down i I, lived, I moved down to florida between sophomore and junior year my parents moved down there yeah so i spent junior and senior year going to high school in fall Lauderdale, and then i hated it so much i moved back and then I was back here, I was like 20, 21 years old, and I, I was working some shit job, and my friends were in bands down there, yeah. there girls all over the place, and I never went away to college, I went to a community college, so I, I went down there for a week on vacation, I just stayed for three years. Yeah. So I basically moved that back down to Fort Lauderdale to get laid. It was in the middle of the spring break when Fort Lauderdale was right. happening, so it was insane. 
That's yeah. what happens. And then you always read these stories like Florida man does meth and bites someone's face off. And it's always it's always someone from Ohio 100 percent of the time. Yeah. Or someone from up north in Florida gets a bad rap for it. Well, yeah, we just go. You get crazy down yeah. there. Yeah. It's, every night is a party. You get I, I worked this job where I would get sixty dollars a day cash at the end of the day, delivering like old refrigerators and washer and dryers to people at 60 cash. And I would just go out that night to the Fort Lauderdale Strip and we just hook up with girls that were on uh, spring break and then the next morning work again and then work for like two weeks get enough money and then quit for like a month right yeah yeah and, and, yeah or just live off all the girls <laughs> girls would pay our bills or whatever yeah. like that because all my friends are in bands and they were living with me so they'd get these girls that would just pay for everything bands always get that they're either with a titty dancer oh yeah or, or uh, a hairdresser yeah and <laughs> anyone that like, gets paid in singles right was usually the rule. <laughs> any girls that got paid in singles you know they take us at a gap and pay you know, 132 dollars and buy us three pairs of jeans all in singles <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> they always buy you clothes, they feel yeah. bad for you. It's great. Jim Florentine and Robbie Slovak are in studio. Jim's special is Simple Man is available to purchase on iTunes and Amazon.com. And Robbie's hosting Stand Up on the Spot at New York Comedy Club Wednesday, January 25th. Go to NewYorkComedyClub.com for tickets. And then you're holding this other special for a while, right, that you just did. Yeah, probably till uh, late summer, early fall. Yeah. Just to give the, a little breathing room? A little breathing room, He's yeah. He's writing specials yeah. once a month now. <laughs> well, there's a lot to write about. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shit that goes down. See, this is a, this is a tough time for me because now I'm trying to get rid of most of that material that I was doing. Right. The last special I just shot, and then I got to come up with new shit. And it's horrifying because you don't know where to write. You're it, basically starting from scratch. Yeah. And you're always like... Uh, you ever know those ducks? I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah, I know they do songs. Like they're quacking and shit, right? <laughs> it's that thing that you're going to put this out there, and you're not sure even where you're talking about it, you know? That's why I'm going to wait like 10 months so yeah. I have time to come yeah. up with some other stuff. Like, yeah, you just throw down ideas, and you don't even know if it's going to work. So it, it's it's a fun time, but it's also it's it's horrifying for a comic Yeah, to just go up on stage and just have just a loose idea and... I find that just to be the most hilarious thing in the world, just to be like, brown mustards are, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, do they start brown or they yellow? What? How's that work? <laughs> just see people looking at you, like, uh, huh? just staring at you like what you're you a mean? maniac. <laughs> and I always, th I don't think there's anything funnier that somebody has an act that kills and then they try to sneak in that new bit and you just see the room die completely i could roll in the ground i could fucking watch a special about that <laughs> new shit that doesn't work because what happens is your old shit is so honed it right. can't follow the new bit <laughs> so usually the rule of thumb is you got to do it early in your set like maybe two three maybe within the first five minutes you need to do that new bit yeah because you warm up with like two or three minutes of your shit that he knows will work get the crowd on your side then hit him you can't do it 20 25 minutes in your set because the crowd can sense it, like, yeah, wait a minute, what are you doing? I'm trying to sneak that in, and then you got to do that explanation. I saw, I saw that. <laughs> that uh, oh, all right, that one was new. It's not quite ready yet. Yeah, right, well, that yeah. one didn't work. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay, let's get rid of that new shit. Yeah. Do you give them the benefit of that? Do you give them the benefit of that? Of I just did write that today. Uh, I try not to. I try to yeah. like own whatever I say. But if something goes horrifically <laughs> bad, then it's like, yeah, okay, this is a new one. We'll get it where it needs to go. Come back and come back in six weeks. Uh, Jim, you're going to hang out with Opie today? Yeah. What are you guys up to? I don't what do you got know. going on? No idea. It's nice to see, you know, everybody's saying that uh, I want to air getting back together. I'm hearing it everywhere. Really? Would that be something? That'd be good. Yeah. Well, where? That's the big question. That's the What big platform? Question. There you go. Right now, I think you'll probably have to put a helmet on to watch the new <laughs> shit. Yeah. I don't know. Well, Sirius is doing good. You know, look, we 31 million subscribers now. Yeah. Everyone was, you know, predicting the death of Sirius XM for years, especially with all Pandora and all the streaming services coming right. out and all that stuff. But now it's still strong as ever. Well, it's very helpful if you already have the radio in the car. I know. Absolutely. And you can just turn it on <laughs> and it's a, yeah. Yeah. Because no one wants to go out and do stuff like that. You know what I mean? No one wants to go, well, how do I put that other service into my... I don't even want to download shit. <laughs> you know, I don't. If someone says there's a great app, I go, I don't know. <laughs> I get in my... Then everything else slows down. I can't fucking deal with it.
All right, Chris, we need to say anything before we get out of here today. Uh, Nick DiPaolo unmasked. Uh, it's happening Wednesday, February oh, it's 8th. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, where are you doing yeah. that? Live? Uh, we're going to do it at the stand. stand. Nice. nice. And that's going to be hilarious. And then Nick uh, sold his special to CISO. So I think he shot it himself. So it'll be great to uh, talk about that. I mean, talk about new platforms, right? For comedy. That's Every why. Time you turn around. Like I shot this one, this this past one by myself. Yeah. Finance the whole thing, and then I'll see in ten months. Who knows? There's going to be six other platforms, right? Where I could so I'll just sit on it for a little while, and we'll figure it out. And that remember, time. at one time, it would have been the biggest thing in the world. How how much you would have had to talk to people to be able to shoot. A special, you know what I mean? Like, what would f- fucking HBO would only pick a couple a year? HBO, Comedy Central, and yeah. sometimes Showtime. That was your that only was options. Yeah. And now, uh, Netflix is just dumping them out, plus paying crazy money to certain people. Crazy fucking Insane money. money. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about, I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. You know, when somebody's getting $20 million for a special? Well, supposedly the Chappelle deal is three specials for $60 million. Right. He already had two in the can over the last, like, 12 years when he's been MIA, yeah. pretty much. He shot some stuff wherever it was, and he had them just sit, just laying around. And then this new one that he's going to do, and they're all going to be released on the same day. That's what I read. Wow. So two what? old ones from the last 12 years, all different stuff, and then a new hour, and they're all going to be released, those three, on the same day. So basically giving him $60 million to do one hour. To do one hour. That's yeah. insane. Because somebody probably shot it in a theater in Portland yeah. or something like that. I go, hey, I got a five-camera shoot. Right. You he's know, like, he, yeah. All right, yeah, it's a copy of it. Okay, cool. That's unbelievable. So Nick DiPaolo, Masco, the entire bang.com for a chance at free tickets. It's happening Wednesday, February 8th, 8 p.m. at The Stand Comedy Club in New York City. I'm just going to say this. Tom Cruise isn't getting that kind of money to do movies anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the movie star money has come down. And then that costs like, because that costs like $200 million to shoot one of those. And now you go out and shoot uh, a fucking nice special for what? 40 50 60 if you want to blow it out but baby uh, people are able to shoot these things on cell phones almost you know yeah and uh, i saw a chappelle out at the comedy store a few weeks ago when i was out there yeah him working on the stuff it's phenomenal i i heard uh that night that he dropped in um dan soder was telling me that he did you see that everybody showed up at the cellar a couple nights ago it was like the fucking woodstock of comedy and he said that Chappelle went on stage and you just forgot about everybody else. <laughs> you know, he just said he was just fucking deadly. You know? All right. I'm going to throw him $60 million to see if he can <laughs> Tell me a couple. Rob, congratulations, buddy. That's congratulations. Big win. Big win. Ow! It equals out my household. <laughs> yeah. Now you can finally be the alpha dog <laughs> in your damn own time. relationship. <laughs> That's it for us. See you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening!